Now let, let's just get right into it. Um, so yeah, I started this case like last night, but I didn't finish it because I, I, I just got really tired and I probably look really tired right now, but that's just something that we're all gonna have to deal with right, deal with right now because um, yeah, I just wanna finish this because I, I do want to like get through, shut up. <laughs> I want to get through uh, the trilogy as fast as possible, just so I can like move on to like, I guess like the lesser known game. What the hell is that? Whatever. It's not that important. Um, so yeah. You know what? Let's just just jump right into it, I guess. Also, I checked that my mic was fine. Hi. Thank you, this was like really unannounced, like a, a really unannounced stream. So uh, yeah, I just wanna finish this case. I'm gonna sit here until I finish it, which is probably gonna be like three or 4 a.m. No, I don't see that I'm like dropping any frames anywhere. Am I frozen? Yeah, I don't think it's me, unfortunately. <laughs> Or I would have noticed. It would have told me. Let me just open my own stream and see what it looks like on mobile. It looks fine for me. Yeah, it... Okay, okay. Sure. That's fine then. Okay, let's just jump right into it, I guess. Uh, we're on part two trial. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Nick! What is it? Is something wrong? Nab, did you see all the people here? It's crazy! Oh, so check out the Mask the Mask Glossy I bought. You bought this? Where? From the little tents in front of the courthouse! They have all sorts of things for sale! Why do they sell fucking thief merchandise? What the hell is this? You know I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. Publicity photo. Come on, I'm guilty. Throw the book at me. Who's screaming like that? Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yeah, I did. But it doesn't look like things are going to get any less ugly for you. Because I did it. I'm the criminal. Me, me, me. <laughs> Why not capitalism? Yeah. Okay, fair enough, I guess. Uh, he's at it again. I sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor. I admit it! But you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true, but that doesn't mean that I didn't commit the crime. Normally, when I say, of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic, but you... Yikes. Anyway, I admit that I'm guilty. So make sure they give me a guilty verdict. Please? Well, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh. Desi, honey! Bonjour! Well, actually, I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, you see, actually, the thief is, um, uh, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee that my Ronnie is innocent. If he is declared guilty, I'll be ever so cross with you. So why are you smiling when you say it? Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got some errands that I need to take care of. I'm counting on you, Nikki boy. Good luck. Okay. To be honest, I really don't know whether Ron is Mask the Mask or not. But there's only one thing I am sure of. He doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Mr. Delight, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust the Ziray. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to... Automod, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I 
and those French names are so not French. They're supposed to be French. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it re reacted to French and dot so for some reason. I don't know why, but for some reason it reacted to that. So <laughs> I don't know what voice to give him. What a stupid question. What did you say? Fine, let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? No, I, I'm not. I will pass judgment after I hear arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. Um, who are you? I'm Godot, legendary prosecutor. Never lost a case. Hell yeah! Ah, he's he's the one that Detective at Abby was look, talking about. God, I can't speak. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Huh, none. Well, I guess you haven't lost if you haven't won. I guess. <laughs> what did you say? I've never prosecuted a case before. Never? But you said you never lost before. Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before either. Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? Even the mightiest of redwoods begin their lives as mere saplings. Yes, but a mask? In a court of law? Huh. Don't you know anything? No matter the man, we all wear masks. Either on our faces, or over our hearts. This guy is the real deal, alright, Nick? Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? So we finally meet Mr. Phoenix Trite. Nick, is he a friend of yours? <laughs> no, I don't think I have any friends that call me Trite. Just who is this masked man? I've returned from the depths of hell. To do battle with you. Well then, uh, Prosecutor Gabo. It's not Gabo, it's Gido, Your Honor. In any in any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statement? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start. To you, Mr. Trite. What, what is it? Are you familiar with the saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? I wonder how much you can withstand before you and your case break in two. Hmm. Well then, let's hear from our the first witness. Um, my name is... No one has asked for your name, witness. Ugh. The important thing is what you know. That's all. Start talking. We're listening. Yes, sir. All right, witness. First, let's hear about what you know about the thief that stole the urn. Yes, sir. Maskumalski is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card to the Lordly Taylor. To the Lordly Taylor. <laughs> card on to Lordly Taylor. His pattern is to always go after only the most precious art pieces. Must buy, we're sure it was Mask the Mask, sir. It fits his MO to a T. Hmm. Huh. So then the actual identity of this Mask the Mask is. M Mr. Gretto! Uh, what are you? We're in the middle of a trial here, Mr. Gato. Blacker than a moonless night, hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much, Your Honor. But well, please, proceed. Very well. It's only coffee after all. What? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial. Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you going to do? As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity, all we can do is show that it wasn't Mask the Mask who stole the urn. Mm. 
art pieces? Like, what for example? Well, his first target was the famous Tear of Eminon. What's that? Some kind of especially salty teardrop? No, sir, it's a blue diamond. A single rare diamond. Next was the crown of Bongora. You know, the thing you put on your head. After that was the left hand of Hades, and then the portrait of Magina, sir. Detective Apney retrieved the portrait of Magina and returned it to the museum. And the target of his fifth and last robbery was the sacred urn, right? But isn't it difficult for him to dispose of such famous art pieces? Well, we assume he must have some underworld con connections. Somehow, Mr. Delight doesn't look the type. Yeah, he's a little too sunny to be hanging out in the underworld. What do you mean when you say it fits his M.O. to a T? I was thinking of the same thing myself. Ugh, I wish you would listen a little more closely, pal. First of all, there's the calling card. We're 100% certain it's authentic. And there's the fact that he seemed to know all about the security system. And finally, his target was an art piece. These are all part of the thieves' modus operandi. Operandi, the... Either way. And so, since this robbery seems to fit all those conditions... That's right. It means that Mask the Mask is behind it. Nick, it definitely looks like it was Mask the Mask who stole, stole the urn. But there's no real evidence either way as to whether Ron the Light is Mask the Mask. But... but... Also, the urn hasn't turned up yet, let alone in connection to Mr. Delight himself. So even though we know it was Mask the Mask that did it, maybe for the time being I should try to show it wasn't Mask the Mask that did it. involved in the investigation from the beginning? Yup. Nobody knows more about the thief than me, pal. It's true. I'm a Svari, author on thieves. An author? Has written books about thieves? I think he probably meant to say authority. The fact that this guy can slip through even my fingers shows how good he is, pal. It's easy when those fingers happen to be butter fingers. Sure, press harder. So nobody knows more about the thief than you, huh? You got it, pal. Except maybe for the thief's mom, that is. But isn't there someone who knows even more about him than the police? You don't mean Detective Svari, do you? Hmm, who is this person? Svar Svari? He sounds German. His name is Luke Atme, sir. I guess I shouldn't have made up such a silly name for him. What the heck? I guess he's not all that famous after all. Anyway, it's true that he did manage to retrieve the last item the thief stole. Oh, I see. It seems you're not the expert you claim to be. Huh. It looks like the thief is toying with me, even now. Have you seen all of these so-called calling cards? Of course I have, except the person in charge of the treasure exhibit never brought their card to the police. So I didn't see this one until after the crime occurred. It's because Detective Acme stopped Miss Andrews from taking it to the police. Was, <clears throat> was the calling card that Lord B. Taylor received authentic? Well, all the cards have one common identifying feature. But we're now releasing that information to the general public. But you're absolutely certain that this card is real. Don't you can't say it out loud, but I bet he's talking about Mask the Mask's emblem. His fifth heist, and your fifth screw-up, huh? Objection, pal! That ain't fair. Maybe you could say I screwed up four times. But this last time wasn't my fault. I didn't know about the calling card this time. You of all people shouldn't be chuckling about this, that Detective Gumshoe. I just want everyone here in the courtroom to know something. If you ever get a calling card from this guy, don't call some stupid private eye. Call your local police right away, got me? Uh, looks like he's really got it in for Detective Apney.
P28. to be something with this. I want to prolong the most priceless work of art and display in your treasure of good iron exhibit. Take good care of the speckled urn, won't you? Is it this? I don't want to look up the guy so soon. <laughs> Damn. Obviously. Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? Just hearing the little in that question is making me nervous. You said that he always goes after the most precious art pieces, right? That's right, pal. But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. What do you mean? Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? No, I meant it from a financial point of view. I mean, it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Godot, what is the value of that urn? The appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it. And I mean that in the worst sense. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that Mask the Mask would normally go after. Hmm, if I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright. You are saying that the theft of the sacred urn was not the work of Mask the Mask. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself, but... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Was this last robbery the work of Mask the Mask or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Godot? coffee here. It's my own special blend. I call it Godot number 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. That's the only thing I've got in my mind right now, Mr. Trites. What? If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. Um, sorry, but I don't get what you mean. If you're saying it was a mask the mask that stole the urn... Then it must be someone imitating Mask the Mask's methods. A fake. A, a fake Mask the Mask? Fake the Mask? Oh, fake the Mask. That sounds so ridiculous, but I like it. Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trite. Proof that the person who appeared at Lordly Taylor that night was actually a fake. Hmm. No, I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior. His point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. It looks like I'm going to have to prove it. I need proof that the person at Lorley Taylor that night was in fact fake the mask. I'm 
Isn't this? What is this evidence supposed to prove? Huh, it's not bad. Okay, well. And his photo was taken, right? Who knows? Maybe there's something on there that shows he's a pig. Didn't I use that one first? I thought I chose that one. Damn. Okay, so it turns out I'm just dumb. Uh, I thought I chose that one, but I chose the, the other one twice. Proof is right here. Looks like a photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. Huh. Well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is? Go on, use this pointer, okay. Show us what about this picture is just so is so peculiar, isn't it? Like his neck piece. It's right here, of course. You mean mask to mask. I have here a piece of reference I would like the court to take a look at. Isn't that the pu publicity photo I bought this morning? The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch is a brooch on the mask's chest. A breach? Here? Bailiff, get my steed. We need to retreat at once. A brooch, your honor. It's sort of a clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp, huh? I see now. But the mask, the mask on the security camera photo. Ah, oh, it has no brooch. The brooch is the same as the emblem on the mask's calling card and serves as a symbol. But the thief that broke into Lord Lee Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this mask, the mask is a fake. I've been fooled again. Order. It's true, undeniably true. Detective Gumshoe, how, how could you have overlooked this? I'm sorry, sir. I don't know how I. Hey now, if you're gonna have a pity party, invite me too. M Mr. Gadot, you deserve some blame in this too. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Huh, the brooch you're talking about. Do you mean this? Oh! That's... Mask the Mask's brooch! Where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha statue. Buddha statue? You must mean the Ambi Face statue. Why didn't you tell me about that, sir? I always put evidence away in my pocket. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. In your pocket? Please tell me you, had, you put it in like a little baggie, please. Uh -huh. This guy is one cool customer. It's a little early to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? That friend of yours left pretty little hickeys on there too. Hickeys? Figuratively speaking, of course. I'm referring to Ron the Light's fingerprints. What? What? The defendant's fingerprints are on the brooch. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Godot, let's see that brooch. I won't attach to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Hmm. She, I mean, it appears to have been torn off some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously, there must have been a big struggle that night at the crime scene. 
Uh-oh. Phoenix, we have a problem. Ha. Huh. You mess with Godot. And you get burned. Oh, he's been playing me like a violin. Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my ne next witness. Huh? You're done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough. That doesn't sound good at all. Bailiff! Bring the next witness into the courtroom. Finally time for the ace detective to make his appearance, huh? One second is one drip of the coffee co coffee pot. Let's hurry it up. Shh! Silence! What's the voice I give him? I see. It's not becoming clear. What's clear? Zvari! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What was I don't remember what it was. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor. A coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? Well, yes, that's right. Huh. Not bad. Not bad at all. You're the first person that's ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. Well, sir pr prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Luke Apme, ace detective and rising star illuminating the heavens. Boy, these two make a perfect pair. They'd either be best friends or they'd tear each other's heads off. I've heard that on the night of the crime, you were all alone on security detail. You have heard correctly. My specially made monocle is worth more than a hundred detective gumshoes. Specially made monocle? That's a magnifying glass. <laughs> if detective gumshoe was worth anything, that is. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyway? There must be some reason. I'm sure of it. Well then, tell us what the special monocle of yours witnessed. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning, just after the date changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Mask the Mask, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal? My specially made monocle never misses a thing. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seems so proud of his performance that evening. Well, sir, old timer, let me explain. We are not speaking of any ordinary thief, but of the king of thieves, the great Mask the Mask, my arch enemy. That is what my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Hmm. Very well. Proceed with the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. <sighs> okay, that adds up, and that also adds up with this. Dancingly descended? From where, exactly? Well, from the entrance, I suppose. Where else? So in actuality, he neither danced nor descended. Someone please save me. Um, so how is it that you didn't notice the thief? My eyes were looking for the thief's shadow while my ears listened for his footfalls. But even so, the dastardly criminal managed to sneak up on me. Up on but It can only be due to this due to his subtly camouflaged cape and soft soled shoes. Here by W. Ace Dunce. How is that even remotely camouflaged? <laughs> you didn't see the criminal's face when that happened. Well, that's, dif that's the difficult part. How should I put it? I saw his mask, that's all I can recall. That's not very solid as far as testimony goes. However, 
Fortunately, I had my third monocle, the security camera, at the ready. It captured his image perfectly. This should be sufficient, I believe. Hmm. Huh. Well, as long as this photo is um, authentic, I don't see a problem here. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have a problem with the photo? Good. Then let's continue with the testimony. Attacked and knocked unconscious, and you weren't able to do a thing. That's certainly some very impressive detective work. Hmm. Well, sir lawyer, have you ever been suddenly struck on the head? Huh? Well, actually, yes, by a fire extinguisher. And what happened? I... I was knocked out. And you lost your memory, too. You see? You have no right to look down on me, then, do you? Well, except for the fact that he actually remembered after a while, and... He was like, oh, that was you. Thank you for giving me that headache. The only reason I didn't lose my memory was because I have more brains to begin with. He may have brains, but the wiring to, self to the self-reflection part seems to be severed. In any case, that was how I, knocked, how I was knocked senseless. And then... Hmm. About this 30 minutes. My silver cord was loosened and my soul fled to the golden halls of Elysium. As usual, I have no idea what this guy is saying. I think he's saying that he was out cold. So, what happened during these 30 minutes? No one can say, Your Honor. That span of time has truly vanished into the ether. Just what is he going on about? There's something suspicious about Detective Abney. How could he not have noticed when this thief came in? Also, he says he was knocked unconscious before he could fight back. But that can't be right. It contradicts the evidence. Huh? Which piece? The real question is, why would he tell such an obvious lie? Mr. Atme, could you take a look at this with that special monocle of yours? Aha! Uh -huh. This belongs to the criminal mastermind, my arch nemesis, Mask the Mask. It is, in point of fact, Mask the Mask's brooch. It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. I wonder how that happened. Huh. Elementary, my dear lawyer. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Not quite. It clearly shows signs of having been ripped off a piece of clothing. Ripped off? Aha! We can only deduce that the thief struggled with someone that night. That's the only thing I can think of. And there is only one person that was in, in a position to have a struggle with the thief. The only person that was on security duty that night. You, Detective Abney. Detective Abney, you must have fought with the thief that night. So why did you lie in your testimony to the court? Witness, giving false testimony is a serious crime. Uh, I... no, wait just a moment, Sir Old Timer. Don't talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home. I just remembered, Your Honor. I was just confused because I've been dealing with so many cases lately. The true measure of a man is in the amount of work he does. That's what I always say. Nick, you can only handle one case at a time, isn't that right? 
You talk too much. Witness! So are you now saying that you and the thief fought? Hold on. That's quite enough, Your Honor. E excuse me? Save the big questions for the testimony. That is one of my rules. Indeed. I understand. I... Look at me. Agree completely. Started off as the judge, but let's not talk about that. Indeed, it's true that I looked away from the door for a brief moment. However, look at me cannot be so easily discombobulated. Discombobulated. <laughs> Sorry. Unfortunately, the, uh, unfortunately the, t the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. A true gentleman fights only with his own fists, but they were not enough. His first blow struck true. BAM! And that's all she wrote. So in the end, you did catch a glimpse of Master Mask. Correct! It was during his third time that he struck me from behind. It seems that my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Hmm. Well, that's certainly understandable. I myself always get confused about which testimony goes with which case. Th that can't be good. What do you mean by weapon from the side? Naturally, the thief had no idea that I, Luke Apme, was hiding in the area. He grabbed the sword from the statue that was standing by the door to the warehouse. Sword? You mean the sword that was all twisted like a tree branch? Correct! Fortunately for me, the blade was not sharp. Okay, so he is talking about the Shichishto. So the thief armed himself with a sword. And what about yourself, witness? But, like, hold on. Uh, I looked away from the door for a brief moment, and then suddenly he was on the other side of the room and got the shichishto from the Ami face statue. So, why did you look away from the door anyway? In addition to the camera, I had prepared a variety of other sensors as well. The alarm on one of those had gone off, so I had, ch had to check the data. That's why I went to the computer, elegantly, of course. So you were momentarily vulnerable when you were working on the computer. What should I do? Should I ask, for s ask some more questions? Uh... What kind of sensors are you talking about? There are other places in the basement that someone could enter and exit from. There are air conditioner ducts, sewer pipes, and a cat door as well. I hooked up heat detecting, infrared, and ultraviolet sensors to each of them. That's a lot of hardware. Was it all yours? Lord Taylor department store was kind enough to provide the monitoring hardware. Naturally, the security camera that, I, that took the photo belongs to them as well. In other words, you couldn't have rigged the equipment, huh? Has that cleared up any doubts you had about me, Sir Lawyer? Let me ask about the computer. So, did that computer belong to Lordly Taylor as well? Correct. Well, except for the program that manages the data. That was specially designed by me. Look at me. In that case, he could have easily manipulated the data. What's wrong, Sir Lawyer? Um, what does that mean? Discombobulated. Hmm. Young people these days, they really irritate me. They allow perfectly good old words to die until everyone forgets what they mean. Sorry, but what exactly does it mean anyway? No, I've forgotten. What was I saying? Gee, that's better than old people who forget what they were saying five seconds ago. <laughs> Phoenix. Stop calling me out like this. I'm only 23. <laughs> okay? Uh, wait. What day 
is it today, actually? I turned 24 in a little over a month. Well, it looks like we've cleared that up. You can go on with your testimony. Can you tell us a little more about what happened? My opponent was both powerful and vicious. You might say he was powerricious. Powerricious? I assumed the Apne fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That, of course, was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. What do I do now? Should I ask more about this? So, what was this flash of light that blinded you? I was bathed in the golden light. It seemed to come from the statue of the woman. The statue of Ami Fei, I'm guessing. Well, that wasn't very much help at all. What do you think, Nick? Well, there's one thing that I'm absolutely sure of now. Yeah? What is it? This Luke Apney guy. He's definitely hiding something. B but, but why? I think I'm starting to figure out what really happened that night. Are you? Because I'm not. <laughs> and I know what happened that night. <laughs> And about the true nature of this detective. Hmm. Do you have any idea? <laughs> I think I'm actually... That's not what I meant to do, but fine, I'm gonna do that anyway. Okay. I see. Hold it. This one. Sorry, I, I don't actually want to like be looking up what I have to do, but like I just want to get through this as fast as possible. What is this at me fighting style? I'm sorry, but that's a trade secret. I really can't say anymore. But I suppose I can tell you if I absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall. That way no one can get behind you. That's it? That's the at me fighting style? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what about that testimony? Important, because it was attacked from behind. Of course it's important. We learned a detective's secret technique, after all. Yes, indeed. I'll remember to use it if I ever take a walk alone late at night. Who the heck is he eyeballing me like that? It's creeping me out. Now then, witness, I'll go ahead and add that secret information to your official testimony. Who 
put my back to the wall to fight, but the three thief's blow landed upon my third eye. Objection! Detective at me. Your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. What fun this is, sir lawyer. It is truly a pleasure to cross swords with you. And now once again you have thrown down down the gauntlet at my armored feet. I believe this is what you said yesterday. You know the coward must have wormed his way in through somewhere besides the door. And then my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with this gruesome item here. From behind, huh? But just now, you testified that he struck you on the forehead. I hardly think you could forget where you were hit on the head. It, it seems I've made another mistake. Detective Apney, it's not the only strange part of your testimony. What do you mean by that? For example, the very fact that you hid the calling card from the police itself is strange. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. Geniuses such as, my, such as myself have always been misunderstood. How sad. It's wrong. Objection. To err is human, to forgive divine. Humans aren't machines, they have souls, feelings. They live, they die, they love, they hate. And yes, they even make mistakes. Hey, hold on. It, it's not as pretty as that. Really? What is it like then? Always chase a riddle down to the end. That's one of my rules. This is it. This might just be my chance to turn things around. Mr. Wright, what exactly is it that you're asserting? Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts that... The answer is simple. It's all clear to me now. Detective Luke, Luke Apme's true identity is actually Mask the Mask. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts to Mr. Apme's story. He says he was hiding at the crime scenes, which is why no one ever saw him there. And then, in his last case, he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe when the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. Th th that's because I analyzed the crime scene data and made an exquisitely elegant deduction. <sighs> exquisitely, sorry. I picked up clues that the police overlooked in order to arrive at a... Oh, please. The explanation is far simpler than that, Detective Atme. The truth is that you are, in fact, Mask the Mask. But, Mr. Wright, this photo, it clearly shows Mask the Mask. The security camera belongs to Lordly Taylor the Poppin' Store. He shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. He didn't need to manipulate it. He gained access to the warehouse under the pretense of providing security. Then he simply dressed up as the thief and stole the urn. So, the ace detective is actually an ace thief. It's his true witness. Aha! Uh -huh. The mask's MO is pure genius, and so am I, Luke Apme. Ace Detective, you're very clever to have come to such a conclusion. I am impressed, Sir Lawyer. What? Witness, you, you're admitting it. Nick, now's your chance. Yes, time to put the last nail in this guy's coffin. Detective Apme, when you assume the thief's identity. Wait, have I? No, I haven't. I gotta go to... Mm. Oh, 
dashboard. There it is. Let me see. I just need to add. Godot's objection. Loot box, there we go. Down here. Godot, enable. There we go. Now, it should be good. Godot blend number 102, my personal favorite. Mr. Godot! The ace detective is actually an ace thief. I smell a best selling novel. There's only one problem. It simply isn't true. B but, Mr. Godot, Mr. Wright has made some very strong points, and I. I will admit, I, my opponent has woven a compelling narrative out of a whole cloth. But it is, in fact, nothing more than a patchwork kilt. quilt. Quilt, Mr. Wright. If this detective really is the thief, then show us the proof of your claim. But it had better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee dripping down your face. Well, Mr. Wright, don't just stand there. This court would like to see the decisive proof you have. Quickly! Huh? Oh, yes, of course. What's the big rush? Are you alright, Nick? Me looks pretty rattled right now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can. Can I really do it? The decisive evidence that proves Mr. Luke at me is in fact mask the mask. Uh, let me just scroll down because I like to cheat. Proof? Of course I, I... I've got nothing. Huh. Just what I thought. A man has to hold his head up high, no matter how bad, bad things get, after all. Uh. I see. I thought perhaps you had some evidence to back up your assertion. This is no good. I've got to stay on the attack. I'll never get another chance to prove that this guy is a thief. Don't give up, Nick. Think harder and try again. It's no good. I'm just not ready yet. But... Are you going to just give up and let us lose this? So you've come to your senses, have you, Sir Lawyer? I, uh, I can't think of a counterattack at all. It seems the cloud of suspicion surrounding this witness has lifted. Mr. Godot, if you have anything further to add, then... Wh who? Who are you? That doesn't really matter right now, does it? Miss Delight, what are you doing here? Nikki boy, the thing you've been looking for, I think I found it. You mean, that bag? No, not the bag. What's in the bag? Well, th that, that, the sacred urn. Nick, it's the urn. Order, order, order. You, madame, that urn, where did you find it? You'll never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants, Ace, Ace Detective. Look at me. Oh, Desi, you're the best. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. At me? Even you are going to have a hard time weaseling out of this one. Objection. Shut up. Ha, huh. pathetic. M Mr. Godot, do you have something you wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. It simply amazes me how quickly times change. In the old days, a man was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. You're still denying that Mr. Apney was involved? Before casting aspersions at Detective Apney, consider the young lady here. Your name is Desiree. Desiree Delight, is that correct? Y yes. What about it? Ha. Huh. How charming. The length that a woman is willing to go to save her husband is truly inspiring. What are you insinuating? As the wife of the criminal, you could have discovered that stolen urn anywhere. Including the office of the good detective here. So you found the urn. What does that prove? It certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you found it. What? I just brought it here from the detective's office. 
Please, madame. This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more could only compound the tragedy we have been witness to. You're wrong! I would never... I would never do such a thing. Miss Light. Please, Nicky boy, you've gotta help me talk some... <clears throat> you've gotta help me talk some sense into these people. There must be some way. I've got to prove that Ern was actually in the Acme Detective Agency. Fingerprints. I can prove where the urn was. By the fingerprints on it. Fingerprints, huh? Oh, come now. You're really mi now you're really making me laugh, sir lawyer. Fingerprints indeed. May I go on? Good. Now it would be perfectly understandable if my fingerprints were on the urn. After all, it was I who was guarding the urn in the first place. In any case, I am always in the habit of wearing gloves, as you can see. So unfortunately, my fingerprints wouldn't be evidence of anything. What about it, Mr. Wright? This witness fingerprints would mean nothing anyway. Nick, what are you going to do now? I'm too far to turn back now. Abby must have brought the urn back to his office yesterday. And there, I'm sure someone must have left their fingerprints on it. The defense proposes that the fingerprints of this person should be on the urn. Mine. Ah, oh, of course, that's where we get Phoenix there. So what is all this fuss about fingerprints anyway? Miss Rapney, do you recall the events of yesterday? Hey Nick, come on, open it up. Hey, wait a minute, we can't just open up his private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy. This is an important investigation. Well, what's in there? Hang on a sec, I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kind of hard and smooth. Well, hello there. It's true that I didn't get a chance to look in the bag at the time, but I did touch what was inside. What? You touched it? And I remember it very well. It was smooth and hard. Well, uh, that was just... Your Honor, I'd like the court to examine the fingerprints of that urn. If my fingerprints are on there, then it proves that the urn was in Detective Apme's office. Well, even if your fingerprints are on the urn, it still doesn't prove when they were put there, does it? Of course it does. What did you say? It's not what I say, but what Adrian Andrews, the person in charge of the exhibition, said. Polish it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. If she polished it that much, she must have removed any and all fingerprints on it. And the only chance I had to get my fingerprints on it after that was yesterday at the Apme Detective Agency. Huh, this blend, Godot blend number 107. I've decided. It's a little too bitter, after all. I thought 102 was your favorite. Order! 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 I accept the defense's request. Bailiff, take this urn and... Wait! Wait a moment, Your Honor. There is no need for that. No need, you say? Precisely. I already know Mr. Wright's fingerprints are on the urn. What are you saying? Yes finally broken him down. Shut up, Pinocchio. Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. This guy is nuttier than a fruitcake. You see, it was me all along. I am the one and only Mask the Mask. Ha ha, I hope you all enjoyed my little performance. I think he may have lost it. Well, Mr. Godot, what's Mr. Acme's condition? He's still in the lobby, laughing insanely, Your Honor. I wish I could enjoy the joke as much as he seems to be. Well, it looks like the matter has been settled. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of the an innocent young man, besmirching him with the title of thief. Nick, you were right after all. Yeah. I guess Mr. Delight really wasn't the thief. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. You're wrong! Wrong, I tell you! Uh, um, I mean... 
Not exactly wrong so much, but actually not right is what I was actually really trying to say. Oh no, he's not. Oh, this can't be happening. The thief, the sneaky, odious thief who's been stealing all of the treasures. It's me! I'm him! I'm the one you want! I'm the thief, I tell you! So do it! Pronounce me guilty, please! I don't know what kind of a kangaroo court you think this is. You all think this is, but... Objection! The true identity of the thief has already been proven. Please hurry and pass judge... What are you talking about? I already confessed. I'm the thief, I tell you. Mr. Godot, don't just stand there drinking coffee. Huh. Hey there, Mr. Thief. Y yes, yes, sir. If you're really a man, then clean up your own mess. I I'm sorry, I'm afraid I just don't have any idea what you mean. If you are mask the mask, then prove it. That's what it means. Yes, sir. I'll be happy to. He says he'll be happy to, Nick. It's kind of cute. He's 100% committed to his fantasy. Good boy. Just remember one thing. A boy only gets one chance in his life to become a man. I know that. I won't fail, I swear. Okay, then. Talk. We're all listening. Oh, well. Let's all have a listen to this confession. God, this hoodie is way too warm. My god. Ugh. The truth is, I've been mask to mask all along. I mean, you can't prove that I'm not really, a not actually mask to mask, can you? I don't have an alibi for the night the urn was stolen, after all. I donned my costume that night and dancingly descended upon the scene of the crime. Look, you can see right there in the photo, that's me. As for my brooch, I snagged it on the door handle and it got torn off, that's all. Hmm, I don't like the direction this trial is taken. But this is how every trial goes. At least with me, anyway. Huh. You're doing great. Stop it, Mr. Godot, you're embarrassing me. Like I said, you're only going to get one chance to testify, alright? But if you make it through this with flying colors, I'll keep my promise too. I'll make sure you stay locked up in prison as the one and only true Mask the Mask. Thanks so much, Mr. Godot. I, I'll do my best. All right, Mr. Wright. I am afraid it's time for the cross-examination. Why does man want to go to prison so badly? <laughs> what? You've got no alibi? I've been a judge for a long time, and this is the first time I've heard, of a, heard a defendant brag about not having an alibi. But I tell you, I was in Lord of Taylor that night. Uh, no, that's too vague, even for me. To be more precise, I was down in the basement warehouse. Hold on. What is it, Nick? Where was Rhonda Light when the crime happened anyway? If we can prove he had an alibi after all, this case will be a piece of cake. Well, you're right, but... Huh. You think you can prove that? Wake up and smell the coffee. Well, I think maybe I can. Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence that shows the defendant has an alibi? Yes. I have the evidence. Or do you think I'm still some sort of third-rate rookie? Oh, I've never seen you this angry before. I'm not surprised. Anger is the last refuge of the pathetic. I thought I was more confident than angry. Well then, let's see this evidence already. Show to this court evidence that proves where your client was on the night of the crime. Take that. Mr. Delight, this wallet belongs to you, correct? Oh, yes, it does. I, ha I had lost it somewhere. Mr. Wright, when you find a wallet, you should report it to the police right away. Ah, no, you don't understand. This is an important piece of evidence. Evidence? Mr. Delight, when did you first notice that you'd lost your wallet? Uh, let's see, I think it was on the night of the crime. 
But I know I still had it when Desi and I went out for dinner. This wallet was found at approximately 1 a.m. at KB Security Headquarters. What? Surely you're not serious. Yes, I am serious. This proves that Mr. Delight was, in fact, at KB Security that night. No! So if the defendant was at KB Security at 1 o'clock in the morning, then that proves that he has a watertight alibi. No! Furthermore, considering the distance between Lord Taylor and KB Security, it would have taken 30 minutes to get there by car, according to Larry, anyway. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have anything to say? And stop drinking that coffee! Come on, Mr. Thief. Don't let this guy beat you. Tell him why he's wrong. You're the only one who calls me thief, Mr. Godot. All right, I'll try. I I'll do it. I will. He's really got Mr. Delight all worked up. He's like a kid at his first day of school. Look, it's just ridiculous. Why would I have dropped my wallet at KB Security? Someone must have planted it there to make it look like I was there or not at the heist. Planted it there? He's really reaching now. Mr. Delight, you probably dropped your wallet when you took it out to use this, didn't you? The key card to KB Security CEO's office. No! Huh. That was a pretty good try, Mr. Trite. Unfortunately, you've overlooked one small thing. What? Motive, of course. Why would this thief go to KB Security in the middle of the night anyway? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, it looks like you need some more evidence after all. Oh, stupid kid. Now then, let's see your evidence. The evidence that shows why Mr. Delight went to KB Security at 1 a.m. that night. <laughs> Mr. Delight, I believe you've seen this before, correct? Oh, that's... What is it? A blackmail letter. That's what it looks like from the contents. B blackmail? Yes, basically it says bring $50,000. Hmm, that certainly sounds like blackmail, all right. At the time of the theft, Mr. Delight was dealing with the blackmailer himself. In KB Security's CEO, of CEO office, a full half an hour away from the scene of the crime. Uh -huh. Order! 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 So when the theft of this burn occurred, the defendant was a KB security. It looks like a perfect case for the defense. You may see it as a perfect case, Judge. But to me... Well, let's just say that my Godot blend number 107 impresses me a lot more. You just said you didn't like it because it was too bitter. What are you trying to say? <laughs> you say the thief was being blackmailed by the CEO of a security company. But, did you actually investigate the CEO at all? Huh? Well, um, no, I guess not. Accusing a man of blackmail with no proof. I'm not sure what I think of that. Not sure what I think of that? At least I know what I think of you. Hmm, good point. I'm not sure what I think of it myself. You claim that the defend defendant entered the CEO's office, but you will need at least one witness to corroborate your claim, Mr. Wright. Nick, I think we're going to have to track down the CEO guy. No, we don't have to track down the CEO at all. What do you mean by that, Mr. Trite? There is someone else who can testify. This is the person who can testify that the key card was used at 1am that night. Well... Larry. Who is this useless looking young man? You don't remember him, Your Honor? Hmm, not exactly. But just looking at his picture makes the bile start to rise in my throat. It looks like he doesn't rem remember the case from two years ago. He probably blocked out that memory on purpose. Anyway, this man was working as a guard at KB Security that night. Oh? I want to see how much... Uh, oh, we're, ne we're nearing the end anyways. Yeah, this is like the last one. For this chapter. I normally don't look at like a walkthrough guide, but right now I'm doing it because I just want to get through this episode. <laughs> 
the question at hand is this key card because I, I started it last night and I just want to finish it as soon as possible. So I can finish this entire trilogy as soon as possible. So I can start the investigations games as soon as possible, you know, like... The question at hand is this key card. Yep, that's the key card they use in the building I work. According to the serial number, this one is for the CEO's office. You need it to get into that room, and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. Hmm. As you can see, there's no need to investigate the CEO of KB Security. We should be able to discover the truth simply by analyzing this key's card, this key card's data. Well, Mr. Godot, the name of the CEO of KB Security is Kane Bullard. I was unable to contact him directly, but I got the keycard data. Here. So, so what does it show? Each keycard has its own serial number and they leave detailed records of their use. According to this data, this card was used at 1am on the morning of the crime. But that means it can't be Mr. Delight dressed as Master Mask in this photo. Huh. It looks like you're right. Two minutes isn't even enough time to brew a cup... A good cup of joe. So... So then... Well, the light was clearly in the office of KB Security CEO at the time of the crime. The prosecutor's office is ready to admit that fact. Therefore, it's impossible for the defendant to be masked to mask. Good job! You did it, Nick! Not enough. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of thief. What's wrong, Your Honor? I'm ready to pass judgment, but before I do that, do you have any further objections? No, Your Honor. Hmm. Mm hmm. Very well. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Rondelite. Not <laughs> guilty. Court is now adjourned. Nick, you did it! You were right after all. Actually, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. Nicky boy! Oh, Miss Light. I knew I could do it. I believed in you all along, Nicky boy. I don't know how I can ever repay you. Aw, shucks. Thanks, Miss Light. I just know I'm blushing. Congratulations, Mr. Nick! Oh, pearls! I've got a bad feeling about this. <gasps> Who is this woman? Oh, she... she's nobody. She's just, uh... You're blushing! How dare you do this in front of Mystic Maya? You should be ashamed of yourself! Ouch! She slapped me! Um, Pearly? This woman is Mr... is Miss Desiree Delight. She's our clan's wife. <gasps> Mr. Nick! Yes? You're even worse than I thought. Going behind the back of your own clients. N no, you've got it all wrong. I'll never forgive you. How? A double slap. Well, anyway, all swells, all swell that ends well, right? We got the sacred urn back and the thief has been caught. You're so right, and it's all thanks to Nikki Boy here. But actually, it was you, Miss Delight, that brought us our urn back. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, please, you're embarrassing me. If we won the case, then why does this guy look so glum? Oh, but I am a thief. Actually, what's the point now? What is it, honey? I did my best for you, Ronnie. I know that, and I appreciate it, Desi. But the thing is... Come on, give the kid some time. He's just got a little touch of the blues. You know what I- what about- you know about feeling blue, right, amigo? M Mr. Godot, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. I just came here to say thanks to my newest buddy. You, Mr. Trite. 
Maybe I should learn my name before you before you call me buddy. Oh, well, playtime's over. Huh? Early this morning, the body of Kane Bullard was discovered. Kane Bullard? Where have I heard that name before? Isn't that the name of the CEO of KP Security? Wait, body? The estimated time of death was 1 a.m. on October 12th. 1 a.m. on October 12th? You don't mean. That's right, amigo. At the same time that. Uh, that. Uh, ugh. At the same time that a cheap little urn was being stolen, the CEO of KB Security was being murdered. So then, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. You figured it out already, haven't you, amigo? Or have you already forgotten about that piece of info I helped you out with today? Help me out. What? On October 12th at 1 o'clock in the morning, Ron Delight was in the CEO's office. The scene of the murder. After getting that blackmail letter, he must have been imbruted with it with utter rage. What are you saying? Imbrued with rage? Come on. Don't tell me you didn't know. Ron Delight was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. An employee of KB Security? It looks like the alibi that saved him from being convicted as a thief is going to be the news that gets him hanged. Kind of an anti-alibi. No way! He can't be the thief because he was at the murder scene when the murder occurred. No! That's a lie! It can't be true! Oh! Oh! But I... I am a thief, I tell you! Run the light. You're going back to prison again. This time the charge is much more serious. This time you'll be tried for murder. What? This can't... This is impossible! Looking forward to another exciting showdown, Mr. Trite. You and I aren't through with each other yet. Surely you won't back down from a challenge. You've never been a coward. Mr. Nick! Is there something personal between you two? I returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. At least let me have some fun while I'm here. This guy... Who the heck is he? He may be quiet, but he's the most dangerous enemy I've ever faced. Well then, time to say goodbye to Mr. Delight. Nick, how could this be happening? Right in front of our very eyes, our client has been arrested for murder. And the one who established his presence at the, at the scene is me. Ronnie! Arrested for murder on the very same day he's declared innocent of larceny. What the heck is going to happen next? I want to try something. Um, part three only on our end, sure. Uh, I want to attempt to add a uh, one of these. Um, does that sound okay? I'm not really sure, but like now you can't really hear my computer like working in the background i just wasn't sure if i liked it like this because there are like certain sounds that it just like doesn't want to pick up but uh, i'm gonna try at least this chapter with this filter turned on so um sure You know, I'm glad we found the urn and all, but poor Mr. Delight got arrested again. Well, supposedly, Mr. Delight was in the CEO's office when the murder occurred. No way, Jose! I don't buy it! But the one who proved that Mr. Delight was there... ...was Mr. Nick himself! At least from what I can understand. Looks like you did too good of a job this time, Nick. Um, uh, well... How about we get started looking into the KB security murder? I think I'm going to head back to Karain Village for a little while, if that's alright. Sure, but why? I'm going to bring the sacred urn back and have some people take a look at it. Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll go with... No, Mystic Maya! You should stay here! I want you two to spend some special quality time together, full of love and happiness. 
probably so caught up in her fantasy she forgot there was a murder to solve. Now remember, no fighting, okay? She's gone. Okay, Nick, time to get going on this murder investigation. I already told you, it's not me! A sad, pitiful whine that tapers into silence. Sounds like they're interrogating Mr. Delight right now. Man, we don't have any... When we don't have enough time as it is. Yeah, well... I guess the police are going crazy just like we are. Yesterday they thought he was just a thief, but now they got a murder case on their hands. I guess you're right. That guard over there looks a bit on edge too. I think he's the present. <laughs> Come on. We'll just have to come back later. Okay, let's go check out some other place, Nick. Oh, Nicky boy! Maya! Miss Delight. All I wanted to do was help my dear Ronnie. Yeah, but I guess it ended up hurting this his case. Don't say that, Nick! She doesn't need your help beating herself up. Hey, Nicky boy! Please! Please help Ronnie! He's not a killer, I swear! My Ronnie wouldn't hurt fly! Alright, I'll poke around and see what I can find out. Really? Are you serious? I'm so happy! I knew asking for your help was the right thing to do. I... I don't know what I can do to help anymore. I had no idea Miss Delight had such a vulnerable side. Listen carefully, Nicky boy. My Ronnie would never, ever kill anyone. It's just not in, not in him. I don't think he would either, Nick. Yeah, but you have to admit he's got a bit of a temper to him. It's not that hard to imagine him just snapping and screaming, Please die! He would never say that! Anyway, Mr. Light, he might not be a killer. But he's still going around saying he's a thief. I already told you, that's just a fantasy for him. Miss Light, I hate to say it, but you're the one living in a fantasy world. What? How dare you say that to me, Nicky boy? I know everything about my Ronnie. We don't have any secrets between us. Ronnie isn't the thieving type. He's so honest that he wouldn't even sneak a nap. He... He's so honest that he wouldn't even steal a glance. A thief? Ha! <laughs> the very idea. Hmm, I guess I just don't get it. Huh? Get what? I just can't understand how they can be so different and yet... Be such a happy couple. <laughs> Sir. Are you doing what I think you're doing? Yeah, they sure are different. Come on now, Nikki boy. It's not that mysterious, is it? It was love at first sight. For me, anyway. What? For you? Um... So, was it really love at first sight when you first met Mr. Delight? Well, maybe not at first sight, but Ronnie saved my life. Saved your life? I was at work one day when two robbers suddenly rushed in. Well, I'm not the kind to just curl into a little ball in a corner, so I fought back. R robbers? Yes, they took me hostage. I was so frightened. They were both carrying these huge knives and I, I broke down into tears. Yeah, I would too if I were in that situation. Oh, I think I get it. Did Mr. Delight come running to save you? Yes, exactly. I remember he looked so handsome in that guard uniform of his. He went right up to those two knife-wielding ro wielding robbers and screamed in their faces. Please stop it, he screamed. I could see the robbers' faces turn pale. That high-pitched shriek of his does have a surprisingly strong effect on people. Then, crying and swinging his arms like crazy, he attacked the two robbers. All by himself. He came to save me, a total stranger. All by himself. He was so scared that he was crying and shaking, but he still re risked his life for me. Wow, that's a great story. Yes, he may not look it, but in a tough situation, there's no one better. That's why I fell in love with him like I did. That's so romantic. I'd fall in love too, I guess. 
Nick, I hope you'll do the same for me if I ever get taken hostage. With Maya, that possibility always seems to loom in the not-so-distant future. <laughs> Interesting. Sorry, I just, like... There were some parallels there to Phoenix's past. <laughs> Which I found mm, kind of interesting, I guess. I hate these kinds of people more than anything. Um, you mean ace detectives? No, I'm fine with ace detectives. Oh, so then you must mean thieves. No, they're alright too. I just hate thieves that pretend to be ace detectives. There's nothing I hate more than cowardly men. By the way, why did you go to Detective Apme's office anyway? Well, as the trial went on, I started to get more and more anxious. I went there to try to find out more about the real criminal. The real criminal? Yes, obviously, the real Mask and Mask is not my Ronnie, right? I yeah. And Detective Abney knew more about Mask and Mask than anyone else. They mentioned him on the Great People Around Town segment on TV. So then you went there to ask him some questions. That's right, I'll do whatever it takes to save my man. Secretary said the ace detective isn't in right now, but I forced my way past her and into his hideout. I wouldn't exactly call that office if it's a hideout. That bag was sitting right there on top of the table. Well, yeah, we saw that bag there yesterday, too. There's nothing lower than someone who would try to pin a crime on someone else. Mr. Light, do you know about KB security? Don't be silly, of course I do. That's where my Ronnie works. So she thinks he still works there, huh? And yet, according to what we heard today... Don't tell me you didn't know. Ronnie Light was once, an, was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. Ron quits. He doesn't work there anymore. It looks like Mr. Light doesn't know. KB Security is only about 20 minutes away. By motorcycle, that is. Blair told me it takes 30 minutes by car. Well, I have to admit I tend to fly pretty fast on my bike. To make it to KB security that fast, are you sure you aren't li literally flying? Why don't I give you a ride sometime? Or better yet, how about now? Um, uh, no, I'll pass. Thanks. Why don't you just tell us where it is and we'll go ourselves? What a scaredy cat you are, Nick. So Light told us the location of KB security. Okay, let's head over there right away, Nick. Sure thing. So I guess this is where it all went down, huh? The walls in here look thick. Just like you'd expect in a CEO's office. What has that got to do with anything? Hey, it's you guys. Oh, it's Detective Gumshoe. Today was a real train wreck for you guys, huh? Sure was, pal. That prosecutor made real fools of us. I feel for you. Oh, that's not like you at all. I thought you'd be more like... Oh, that was great. You guys got what you deserve, pal. Ho, 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 ho. Or something to that effect. Do, do I really sound like that to you, pal? If the gumshoe fits. Um, well, anyway... The point is, I can tell when someone puts their heart into their jobs, and I can sympathize when things don't go your way. Sometimes I feel like wrong is the only way things go for us detectives. Wow, I had no idea Detective Gumshoe was such a nice guy. Now, if this little love fest is over, maybe we can start investigating. What's this? Check out this big, thick binder here. Leave the heavy lifting to me, Nick. Reading a file isn't exactly backbreaking work. Just a little hard on the eyes. Ah! What do you find out, Nick? This file, it's not about any sort of security operations or anything. This huge file is all about Mask the Mask. It's filled with info on him. What? What kind of info? It's filled with incredibly detailed information about his methods and, and the crime scenes. Hey, Nick. Look at the last page. It's a list. Let's see. Tier of Eminon, $100,000. This looks like a list of all the treasures that Mask the Mask stole. 
So then $100,000 is the value of the stolen item. I don't know, that number sounds kind of low to me. I think I'd better secretly make a copy of this list. This must be this must be the CEO's desk. It's a lot simpler than I would have thought. Hey, that looks like a super soft chair. Let me try it out just for a second. Oh, nice! I feel just like a CEO. Hey, you! Whip me up a cup of cup cup of the. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hey, you! Whip me up a cup of some really exp ex expensive import tea and mix some and some scones. Move it! Ah, this is the life. Um, the victim sat in that chair before it was brutally killed, you know. GG, Maya. Oh, there's a button here. Let's see. Hey, cut it out! Don't press that! That was pretty funny! I never knew Detective Gumshoe could jump like that. What is that button anyway? It's an emergency buzzer. It says it right here on the panel. Oops, you're right. It's written right there. Nick, how many times have I told you to read the instructions first? This alarm's connected to the basement guard room. It's used to summon security up here. Really? Then it's possible on the night of the crime. Oh! So when the CEO was attacked, do you think that maybe he pressed the buzzer? Yeah, I thought about that, so I asked around, around down there. But they said that the buzzer never went off that night. Also, we couldn't find any fingerprints on the buzzer. Mr. Bullard, the victim, wasn't wearing any gloves, by the way, just so you know. Hmm. I think we'd better go and talk to the guard about this emergency buzzer. Wow, this safe is unbelievable. I bet four pearls would fit in there. And it's got a bunch of doohickeys attached to it. It's pretty am amazing, alright. Motion sensors, heat sensors, weight sensors. Hey, Nick! Come on! Let's open it and take a look! If I broke into one of these, wouldn't that set me down the path to Hoodlumville? This rope. You think it fell out of the safe when it was opened? I don't think so. So, you mean... Yeah, I think this string shows where and how the corpse was lying. Y you mean... the victim? He was killed by being crushed by the safe door? She can't be serious, can she? These look like some kind of bookshelf slash rolling cabinet hybrid. Uh, I, can't, I can't get in between these two shelves. Don't strain yourself trying. It looks like the shelves are controlled by a special panel. So I guess it's it's one shelf at a time, huh? Looks like they're filled with bunches of files. Yeah, files filled with data about security jobs they were hired to handle. It'd be a good night's reading if, if you've got insomnia. I was hoping for something a little bit more exciting, like UFOs or something. Detective Gumshoe, tell us what you know about the murder. Um, okay, but the thing is, I'm really not supposed to. Hey, come on. What about how we put our hearts into our work? Things are really working against us right now and we need help. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Just don't start crying on me, okay, pal? Okay, I won't cry on you, pal. The victim's name is Kane Bullard. He was the CEO of KB Security and a pretty big fella in his own right. His corpse was discovered at 9 this morning. His estimated time of death was 1 in the morning on October 12th. Cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head, probably an object in this room. It happened at exactly the same time as that time that Mask the Mask was stealing the urn, huh? So why did it take almost an entire day to discover the body? There's a good explanation for that one. Bullard's body was stashed away inside that safe. Safe? Well, it is pretty big. Nobody had heard from him, and when they opened the safe this morning, out he came. Also, the body fell out. That white string must be the shape from when he fell out. I think we still need some more information about Mr. Billiard. Maybe you could start by getting the man's name right. So, um, what happened to Mask to Mask? He's at the detention center screaming like a madman. Investigate me again! He keeps yelling. 
Uh, no, no, I didn't mean him. He's not the real thief anyway, right? Oh, you mean the detective at me? Oh, that was great. That guy got the... got what he deserved. Now that's the detective I know and love. Think about it. Abney was always around when a calling card showed up. But he always mysteriously disappeared when he, when the heists took, heists took place. I was hiding at the crime scene. Ha, <laughs> yeah, right. It's the lamest thing I've ever heard. That's how you just knew he was a thief. I would explain how he was able to retrieve the stolen item he keeps bragging about. Yeah, he just did that to make himself look like a great detective, that's all. But there's this one thing I can't figure out about his first heist. His first heist? Yeah, the Tear of Eminon case. There was a witness on that one. A witness? Here, I saved the newspaper clipping. Since the thief is already under arrest, you guys can keep it. Hey, this guard here. Haven't I seen him somewhere before? It's pretty small, so it's kind of hard to see, but now that she mentions it... Ooh, that prosecutor! I really don't like that guy. By the way, the way he used our own evidence to do that to Mr. Delight. Yeah, I think he did it that way. Just cause he knew it'd hurt more. That's what my gut tells me anyway. So who is that Java addicted masked maniac anyway? Prosecutor Godot? He's quite the enigma, huh? The thing is, pal, I never even heard of the guy before. He just showed up one day at the prosecutor's office. Came out of nowhere. That's right. He said this was his first case as a prosecutor. And it's true, according to the records anyway, but... No way he's an amateur, he's an iceman in court. A maverick that gives me goosebumps. Goosebumps? You? Yeah, I knew something was off about him, so I asked around. Nobody would talk to me, they just all turned the other way. How oh, Detective Gumshoe, I had no idea you were so unpopular. Oh, no, that's not what I meant. That good old guy acts like he knows me and has a grudge against me. I get the feeling he's hiding some kind of dark secret. Um, so about this. Huh? Where's that? Hey, wait a minute, Maya. What's wrong? We copy that data without permission. Don't show it to him. He might get mad at us. So, what are you two whispering about? Uh, oh, it's nothing. It's just by billfold. It's a pretty thick billfold you got there, pal. I really want you to show it to me. Oh, okay, so that's not what I wanted to do. Detective Gumshoe, tell us more about Mr. Shane Bluebeard. Bluebard. It's Kane Bullard, not Shane Bluebard, pal. Uh, yeah. The, the victim in this case just doesn't make much of an impression on me. Well, you were the victim up until Mr. Bullard was found dead. Yeah, and his body wasn't discovered until this morning. Anyway, we don't have enough information yet. Oh, no, that's that's Phoenix. We don't have enough information yet. Can you help us out? Sorry, I'm actually a little confused myself. For some reason, I'm just blabbing like an idiot right now. Okay, Nick. Now is our chance to get more info about the victim. So hurry up and ask. Can you tell us some more about Mr. Bullard? He was the CEO of KB Security, right? What kind of company is it anyway? Well, the company basically sends security teams to, out to buildings to guard them. Mr. Bullard must have had the chance to learn a lot of the secret, learn le a lot of secrets doing this kind of work. Oh, and and uh, I don't know how to put this, but the guy was kind of a money grubber. Really? Me too. I just love money. I can never get enough. Please stop leaning in towards me like that. You aren't getting to my wallet. Anyway, it looks like he did some pretty shifty stuff to earn his millions. Host, that's my problem. I need to be shiftier. Let me go already. Apparently he was involved in selling trade secrets between rival companies. Well, that's pretty dirty and underhanded. 
Yeah. Oh, KB security used to uh, head security operations against Mask the Mask. What? Really? Yeah, and after screwing up so many times, the company's reputation really took a nosedive. So it really was Bullard who sent Ron the blackmail letter, huh? Mm. About this blackmail letter. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about it too, pal. Why would Kane Bullard have been blackmailing Ron the Light anyway? Well, Mr. Delight used to work at KP Security, right? But what was it that made him quit? Nick, that's it? Maybe that's the same reason he's being blackmailed. Well, I'm in the middle of investigating that right now. Oh, alright. Wow, this is really something else. For a security guard office, it sure doesn't feel very secure. KB security guard. Uh-oh, I just remembered Larry might be... Hey, Nick, what's up? Ugh, so he is here. Yo, how's it hanging, dude? And you got my sweet little Maya with you, too. Hi, Larry. Here, I was working my fingers to the bone. And then what's an angel? I've got no problems with a daytime date, it's all good. No, that's not what we're here for, we're investigating the Bullard murder case. Huh? Well yeah, that's right, you're a lawyer, aren't you? He's so hopelessly clueless. Well if it's about the murder case, boy have I got some good info for you. Really? What is it? Hmm, well I don't mind sharing with my sweet little Maya. But Nick here is a different story. Larry, I thought you two were old school buddies. That was then and this is now. So, what's this good info you were talking about, Larry? Hey, I'm a guard. A pro! I can't just give away information for free. He wants a bribe? I thought professionals were more... I don't know... Honest? Can you talk to him, Maya? Larry, tell us already. What's the good info? I like that. This kitten has got some claws. Okay, you really want to know? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So tell me. Okay, so the thing is, Ron Delight was an employee here. And naturally, since I'm a pro, I looked into his background. Follow me? Yes, you're a pro. I follow you. Go on. And one year ago, Ron Delight was fired. And there was no warning at all. It just happened all of a sudden. I know this is a small company, but I think that was pretty awful. I guess they must have done something bad to have gotten fired like that. Like maybe skipping out of work to, to go pick up hot chicks or something. No, that's just you. So what's it like to be a part-time security guard? Let me tell you, it's tough. Well, you know me, I get by alright, I guess. First I have to keep my eye on those monitors all the time. Monitors? There are security cameras set in each room around the building. It's really hard. Sometimes I feel like my eyes are gonna fall out. Oh. And if I see something suspicious, I have to contact one of the teams. What teams? The security teams for this company. They're supposedly the best in the business. I don't know amateur either, so if it's something small, I don't bother calling them. So in other words, you basically watch TV screens all day long. You were in this office when the murder took place, weren't you? Why do you say that? This is just a part-time job for me, and I can't operate the, qu the equipment, and I'm dumb. Or at least he's aware. He's self-aware, I guess. Even if it's- it, even if it is part-time and you are dumb, you are still in, cha in charge of security here. Hey, give me a break! Don't try to pin the whole thing on me. That's not fair, Nick. Huh? I don't think you can expect someone like him to take any responsibility. Anyway, the point is you were here that night, right? Oh boy. Oh no, I knew something smelled bad and it was the butts after all. Well, it's like I always say, I was done and this is now, okay? 
It looks like I'm going to have to break this, his psyche locks after all. On the night of the night of the crime, were you walk, were you working hard like you were supposed to? What? Oh, of, of, of course I was. Why wouldn't I have been? But didn't you sneak out for a work just yesterday to go see Mr. Light? Oh, but that was that, and and this is this. Is there any chance that you snuck out of work last night, too? Last night too? Never. I didn't sneak out. I'll tell you what. I'll even bet you a dollar. A dollar. Wow. Now that's confidence. Let's put that drenched in the rain puppy look on your face. Do you have evidence that I left my position, or are you just pulling my chain? The evidence that Larry was not manning a station when the murder happened is. Take that. This wallet. You know about this, right? Never seen it before. Liar! You hand delivered this wallet to Mr. Light just yesterday. Give me a break. You can't expect me to remember every little thing that happens. Well, I do expect you to remember something that happened just yesterday. What time was it when you found this? What time was it when you found this wallet? I guess it was around one in the morning on the first floor of our company building. One o'clock. In the morning? That's right. In other words, Larry. At the time of the murder, you were away from the security guard office. Yeah, but, but there's something you didn't think about. What's that? A shift that day didn't start until 10 p.m. The murderer might have snuck in before then. What do you mean by that? If the murderer had snuck in before 10 p.m., then it wasn't my fault. It was the fault of the guy whose shift was before me. For mine, I mean. Why do I have the feeling that he still doesn't get the seriousness of this? Listen up, Larry. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the killer snuck into the CEO's office after 10 p.m. during your shift. Larry, when you use this keycard, does it leave a record? Yeah, it does. But I can't show the record to just anyone, you know. That keycard data was already made public in the trial today. What? I didn't know that. Any kind of request for info like that is supposed to go through me. Boy, does that sound a bit arrogant coming from a part-time guard. Anyway, according to the data, the door to the CEO's office was opened with this card. Furthermore, it was most definitely used at 1am, the time of the murder. No way! Yes, someone used this to get into the CEO's office. That happened at 1am on the night of the crime, right in the middle of your shift. Larry, you can't duck your responsibility this time. No! There we go. I knew it. It's all my fault. It's my fault that the boss was killed. My fault. Larry, there was nothing I could do. I have important issues to deal with too, man. What happened that night anyway? Uh, my Donna happened. Huh? Your Donna? I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, my Donna called and said I have to talk to you right away. So I went to see her and he was standing right there next to her. Um, who was? Her new boyfriend! It was like some horrible joke. Before I knew what was going on, the guy socked me right in the kisser. Normally, I'm the one that does the punching. Isn't that right, Maya? Y yeah. So, is that why you left the security guard office? I'm sorry. It's all my fault. What can I ever make up for it, Nick? What can I do? Huh. <sighs> He's curled up on the floor, crying like a baby. Oh boy. Nick! Is there anything I can do? Anything. Just name it. I'll do whatever I have to do to, to, have to, do to make up for it. I swear I will. Larry. Hey, Nick. As long as he's offering, why don't you show him the evidence we've got? She's right. Maybe we'll get at least one bit of useful information from him. Nick. Um, 
the puzzler and the CEO's office is directly connected to this room, right? That's right. Just like my heart is connected to yours, Maya. Huh? Go ahead, Maya. Press the buzzer in your heart. I promise I'll come running to your rescue, like the professional guard I am. Ow, that was pretty good. Thanks. I try. Do you think you could tell us about the buzzer now? Yes, please. Please tell us. Okay, I guess so. Prepare to be wowed. Uh. Mm. I'm out of her. Um, I accidentally pressed the buzzer earlier. Yeah, I heard it. So that was you, huh? You're a security guard, aren't you? Why didn't you come to the CEO's office? Well, this is the third floor of the basement. The CEO's office is on the first floor. I thought it would be a good idea to, um, adopt a wait-and-see approach. Plus, there's a police detective here, right? I just didn't think it was necessary. It's as if he's trying to win an award for the laziest person on the planet. Planet. Um, let's get back to talking about the night of the murder, okay? Is it true that the buzzer didn't go off that night? It must be a record, right? You must have had a look at it, right? Of course I did, and I couldn't possibly have made a mistake either. Do you think you could take just one more look for me? Pretty please? Oh, okay. I, I just can't say no to you, Maya. What do you think, Nick? He's probably right. I don't think even Larry could make a mistake like that. What is it? What's wrong? I made a mistake! Huh? But, but how? It can't be. It's impossible. Okay, enough already. What about the records? That night, it went off just once in the morning at around 1am. 1am? That's when the murder happened. Really? Are you serious? It's terrible. It can't be. Hmm... And then... The treasures of Kurayan exhibit is all ruined now. Maya... I'm sorry, it's just so sad. This was our big chance for everyone to learn about spirit channeling. Maybe I can cheer her up somehow. Now that we've got the sacred urn back, maybe, maybe they can reopen it. Really? Sure, maybe we can label it the urn of Mask the Mask's Desires. That will probably attract a lot of attention. Whoa! 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 That's brilliant, Nick! We can clean up and be filthy rich! Woohoo! Wow, that was surprisingly easy. Anyways, I'm gonna go back here because we were supposed to talk to Maya first. So, what do we do now? Isn't it obvious? We should get out, out there and investigate the murder. Well, first we need to find out exactly where KB Security is, loca is located. Hey, why don't we ask Mr. Light? We already did this. She should know. Besides, I want to ask her some stuff about motorcycles. Motorcycles? You're not thinking of getting one, are you? I'm not the same little Maya who used to be happy with her dinky little bike, Nikki boy. <sighs> Speaking of asking around, I've got a few questions of my own for Mr. Delight. Okay, well, let's make sure to go to the, deten the, 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 the detention center, too. Can sacred urn. You must be relieved we got the sacred urn back, huh? You bet! There's something a little different about it. Huh? Don't huh at me. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, take a look at this. It clearly says I am on the urn in the poster. But the urn we got back says Ami, like it always used to. Oh yeah, you're right. Plus the vase has pink splotches on it now. I'm sure they weren't there before. Maya doesn't know, but one year ago when the urn was broken, the repairer accidentally turned Mystic Ami's name into I Am. And that repairer was one mechanically unskilled little pearls. But still, I don't remember ever seeing pink splotches on it. Is it possible that urn is a fake? I'm sure pearls will find out about that when she gets back to Kurain Village. 
Yeah, I suppose. Now that I think about it. Maya hasn't been back to Kurain village in a long time. So I guess people still go to Kurain village to do their training, right? Yep. If you want to become a spirit medium, you need to undergo severe training. So... Why haven't you been training lately, Maya? Well... Lately I've been thinking of heading to a channeling dojo to do, to do just that. Uh, yeah. A channeling dojo, huh? Sounds pretty serious, whatever that is. If you're going to train, you have to be serious. Otherwise, real tragedies can happen. Is that what happened last year? Is what happened last year still bothering you? That murder in her village has happened because the power of channeling was misused. When a medium uses the Kurain technique, she temporarily loses her own will. So when an especially strong spirit is summoned, the spirit medium can get taken over and even forced to commit terrible crimes. What's worse, worse in those cases, the spirit medium, the spirit medium has no memory of what happened. That murder. It wasn't your fault, Maya. You know that, don't you? I suppose not, but I guess I'm still a bit shaken up, that's all. Sounds like being the master, the, the master of Kurain is going to be a heavy responsibility. I have to go back here. And then to the basement area. Oh, yeah. oh, it's you, Miss Wright! Miss Andrews! What's she still hanging around down here for? Um, so, how is it going? What about the sacred urn? The urn? Oh, that! It's already been taken care of. What do you mean, oh, that? Taken care of? Do you mean it's been found? Yes! It was brought in during the trial today. Oh, really? You guy, you really are the greatest, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright had nothing to do with it. It was Mask Damask's wife that found it. Well, anyway, I'm... I'm so relieved. I just heard all about it on the news. So that detective was actually the thief all along. It looks that way right now. It's my fault. I'm the one who ended up hiring the masks to guard the treasures. Don't blame yourself. You were just doing your job. Hey, Nick. If she wants to apologize, you should let her. So, when was it that you hired Detective Abney again? About 20 days ago. When was it that Mask the Mask's calling card arrived? That was about 10 days ago. So he sent a calling card to the very place he was hired to guard. I guess that's it then. Detective Abney must have really wanted the Sacred Urn after all. I guess so. What? So Mask the Mask murdered someone as well? Oh... That's how things look right now. Yes, but I, I thought he was here stealing the urn at the time. Well, we're talking about a criminal mastermind, so anything is possible. Nick, let's get down to business already. On the night of the theft, did you notice anything suspicious about Detective Abney? No, I couldn't have. After all, he was hidden the entire time. I never even caught a glimpse of him. He claims that the, that's the way he always operates. That's just what he says so he can have an alibi while he commits the theft himself. Yeah, he was caught in the crime scene photo dressed up as Mask the Mask pretty well. I'm so glad you got your sacred urn back. Yes, but there's still something that bothers me about it. What is it? I'm not exactly sure, but somehow the urn that came back seems different. Really? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Miss Andrews? No, I don't know anything. Why would I? Psyche locks. What do you think this means, Nick? It means the person that holds the secret to the mystery of the sacred urn. It's our very own Miss Andrews. Okay, and then I have to move to the detention center. Sorry, I'm literally just, like, following this guy, like... Piece by piece. Mm. 
I'm also not that into it today, but I just want to get through this. <laughs> huh? M Mr. Wright! Mr. Delight, did they finish their interrogation? Yes, but please don't leave me alone anymore. Mr. Delight, you lied to us before, didn't you? Well, uh, you see... On the same night the sacred urn was stolen from the Lordly Taylor department store, a blackmail letter you got summoned you to KB security to hand over some money. And then, that's where the CEO, Kane Bullard, was murdered. But there's only one Rhonda Light, am I, am I right? So the only question is, where were you that night? This time I want to hear the whole truth, your life depends on it. Uh, okay. Mr. Delight, do you still insist that you are Mask to Mask? Isn't that what I've been saying since yesterday? That was a quick response. Tell me about it. To be honest, it's starting to get irritating. But listen, Mr. Delight! At the trial today, we learned the true identity of the thief, didn't we? Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. I guess it's true, I wasn't the one who stole that urn. Of course not. After all, you were at KB Security at the time. So then the person dressed up as Mask the Musk in this photo. It's gotta be Detective Acme. So that night, you didn't go to Lordly Taylor, you went to KB Security, right? Yes, I went to KB Security at the time the blackmail note said, said I should. Alright, what happened next? Well, I used to work there, so I knew where the CEO's office was. I knocked, but there was no answer. So then I used the key card to unlock the door. It was probably when he dropped his wallet. When I went into the CEO's office, someone was in there. Someone? And suddenly they bashed me over the head. Bam! Was it Kane Bullard that hit you? I don't know. The person ran away while I was still stunned. When I came to my senses, the sight I saw left me speechless. The dead body of the CEO was right there in front of me. I thought I'd die myself. Anyway, I thought I should do something with the body. So that's why you put it in the safe. Yes, that's right. I used to be the thief of one of the security teams. The chief of one of the security teams, so I knew how to open it. Okay, what did you do after that? Well, I got out of there, for starters. I was the one who set up the security cameras in that building. So I knew how to avoid getting being spotted by them. Nick, all of a sudden Mr. Delight kind of sounds like the, like the murderer to me. Please don't say that. Mr. Light, is it true that one year ago, you were forced to quit KB Security? Ah, uh, uh, how did you? I'm, I'm begging you, please don't tell Desi, please. Don't worry, we haven't told anyone yet. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, no, I, um, but I suppose I'll have to tell her sometime. She'll find out eventually. Why have you been hiding it from her anyway? Desi would despise me if she ever found out I was living a life of crime. A criminal, a thief. She'd never forgive me. My marriage would be over. Knowing that, why did you become a thief in the first place? Because Desi spends mon money like it's water. There's no job in the world that could bring in enough money. Except being a thief. At least that's what I thought anyway. What I thought anyway. So he became Mask the Mask for Desiree, huh? And present newspaper clipping. Gotta go present first, maybe. Hey! This is an article about my debut heist! Boy, that was a tough one. Before I knew it, they were hot on my trail. But Mask the Mask, he must have gotten away, right? It says in the article that he disappeared. That's right! I got a sudden burst of inspiration. I hid my Mask the Mask costume in a nearby plastic bucket. Then I quickly changed into my security guard uniform. Pretty clever, huh? Wow, awesome. Hey, hold the 
the phone. The guard in this photo. Is this you, Mr. Delight? <laughs> That's right. Nice trick if I do say so myself. Nice and easy to figure out. Even pearls could see through that in a heartbeat. But as you might expect, Detective Apme found the disguise. He truly deserves the title of Ace Detective. Detective Apme found the mask, the mask. Detective Apme found the mask, the mask is disguise? Hmm, that's interesting. Yes, and I heard that he brought it home with him. So that's it. That's when Apme got his hands on this. Thanks to that, I got the chance to remake my costume. That must have been really time consuming, huh? Yes, it took quite a while to complete. Anyway, a few days after that, I received the first of the blackmail letters. The blackmail letters? You got them starting when? Tell me more, now! Hey, calm down, don't get so worked up. This blackmail letter, is this the first one you got? No, of course not. But this is the first one that ever called me out to a specific location. So, did you start receiving blackmail letters after this incident? Yes, just a few days after the tear of Eminon Heist. That first letter, it said, I know you did it. So, someone found out about your true identity, just like that? It's not easy being a master thief, you know. I got proof that it was you, so give up! I went on to say. So in the end, I had to give up the treasure I went through all that trouble to steal. It's not right. Hey, hang on a second. What do you mean you had to give it up? Oh, don't worry. After I put the jewel in the safe deposit box, the letter specified. Someone sent me $10,000. No one said anything about me being worried, you know. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. Plants? What are these plants you're talking about? They were instructions on how to steal a crown or painting or some other rare tre treasure. They showed security blind spots, escape routes, and even suggested training methods. So you mean that the one who planned the heist wasn't you? No, it wasn't. I only planned the very first one. After that, I received plans from some very kind person. Incredibly de 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 detailed plans. It sounds like Mr. Delight is thankful to the person that was blackmailing him. So Ron Delight was Mask the Mask after all. But someone else is behind the thefts. Someone who planned them all out in detail. All I had to do was deposit the treasure as I stole into the safe deposit box. Then I just waited for the cash to come in the mail. Could you try not to look so gleeful about it? So you went after the sacred urn because of one of those plants too? Well, see, truth is, I've never seen the urn. All I did was follow the instructions and steal what I was told to steal. Mr. Delight, is everything you just told me the truth? Yes, but please don't tell Desi, okay? Ron, before we go, there's one more thing I want to ask you. I yes, but please don't hurt me. Mr. Kim Bullard, do you swear that it wasn't you who killed him? Yes, of course. I could never. I I'm not lying. All I did was hide his body in the safe. But then I was afraid they'd discover what I did, so I turned myself in yesterday. Um, why? Well, if the judge had ruled that I was guilty of robbery, then I'd have an alibi, right? Mm hmm, I guess so. You're really clever, Mr. Delight. I guess I have no choice but to take Mr. Del Delight at his word. Mystic Maya! Hey, Pearly! I'm back! Hey, Pearls. So, what have you been up to this whole time? The sacred urn, Mr. Nick. I took it back to Kurangulish to have it examined. And? And? What did you find out? Well, there's no need to worry. They said it's the real urn. Huh? It's a relief. I was really worried. But there's one small problem. Problem? Oh, these cute little pink splotches. I said that it's paint, and that they were put on the urn recently. Why are we talking about the pink splotches again? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? We gotta find out how they got there. That's the big deal. Yes, Mr. Nick, we gotta find out how they got there. Okay, okay, we'll go find out how they got there. Oh, please don't forget about me. Back here. 
Back here. Back here. Back here. No, down here. Okay, that's all I have to do now. Oh, Pearl, how nice to see you. Hello there. I haven't seen you around lately. What have you been up to? Well, actually, I was having this urn examined. Oh, I see. Maybe if we take another good look at this urn. We can figure out the mystery of what actually happened here. Nick, let's look around one more time. Okay, so it tells me to examine the cardboard box. Cool. This box, there's something about it that's bothering me. That's the box that the sacred urn was in. It looks like there's some pink paint on it too. And it's definitely the same color as the stuff on the urn. I think I know how the paint got on it now. Alright, let's investigate again, Nick. And then pan right. Pink splotch. Looks to me like it's been dry for several days. There's something suspicious about this paint mark. The bottom left part of it is shaped oddly and it's shocking pink. Mr. Nick, could it be that this odd shape is... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is it. Huh? That's the box the sacred urn was in. If you look here, there's a little bit of paint on the box as well. Oh, you're right! Look, it matches! What is it, Mr. Nick? It is all turning out exactly as I thought it would. I think it's all starting to become clear. That much closer to solving the mystery of what happened to the urn. Okay, so now what I have to do is go here and present to nothing. Yeah, sure. Magatama. Miss Andrews, do you know anything about the sacred urn? Do I know anything? I'm in charge of the entire treasure exhibit. The urn that was submitted before the court today. It's obviously not the same urn as before. Well, that's... that's, um, true. Maybe it isn't the same. It could be... could be a fake. A fake? You're the one who said it wasn't the same, so that's the most obvious explanation. Do you have any evidence that the urn was submitted at the trial was genuine? Sorry to break it to you, but the urn is genuine. It's the genuine article. Pearls went back to Kudain Village and had it examined. Is that right? It's nice, but I don't see how. What you discovered was that the urn had been broken again. Did you say again? Yes, it was broken once a year ago, and now it looks like the same thing has happened. And quite recently, too. Recently? Are you saying that this urn was broken recently? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. How do you think it was broken recently? How do you know? This poster. It was made recently, right? Poster? How oh, the poster for the exhibit! At the time when this photo was taken, the urn said I am on it. But now for some mysterious reason it says Ami. When the urn was fixed, the letters were transposed. I am. What does that even mean? I don't. E I don't know anything about that. I wasn't even aware when the photo for this poster was taken. That was a mistake. Now tell me the. Tell the truth. Wait. Four. Even if the urn was broken, I had nothing to do with it. Huh? Yes, that's it. It must have been one of those people at the photo shoot. They probably dropped it. I'm sure that's what happened. Hmm. It looks like she's not going to give up that. That last psyche lock so easily. Do you have any proof the urn was broken here at Lordly Taylor? Okay, uh, paint mark, yeah. Well, Miss Andrews? Um, what is it supposed to mean? There is pink paint all over this urn. Mm hmm. And there is pink paint all over the floor and walls of this basement warehouse. In other words, this urn was broken here. You can't waste a lot of this one, Miss Andrews. But... Uh-oh, she's trying to make her escape. But you can't... You can't get pink paint anywhere. Well, there's none in my office, that's for sure. Well, there is it. Well, there is in my room. 
Liar. Anyway, the paint on the urn and the paint on the floor. There's no proof that it's the same paint. Come on, this is getting ridiculous. The proof linking the paint on the urn to the paint on the floor is the urn box. This box, the urn was stored in this, right? Yes, that's right. Well, there's pink paint on this box as well. Ah! I think you already know where I'm going with this, don't you? Yes, more or less. The paint on the floor has an odd shape imprinted in it, doesn't it? Yes. If you put this box into the impression in the paint, you can see it fits perfectly. Which means this box was dropped right over there. And that is when the urn was broken. Your name does your justice, Mr. Wright. I'm so sorry, I was the one... the one who broke the urn. Why does this make me feel some sort of evil... like some sort of evil school teacher? I'm a terrible person. Not only did I break it, but I tried to hide what I did. Well, that's not so hard to understand, is it, Pearly? No, not at all. I know just how she feels. It happened about two weeks ago, just after the poster photo was taken. On the same day the urn arrived here. I thought I'd put it away down here for safekeeping. I was carrying it in the box. When I tripped on a paint can and lost my balance, the box I was carrying crashed to the ground. I heard a terrible noise and I thought my heart was going to stop. Fearing the worst, I opened the lid of the box and that's when it happened. The broken pieces of the urn fell out of the box and landed right in the paint. I... I was in shock and let out a huge scream. I don't know why I made her voice sound like that. Hmm. I can totally see how that could have happened. Yes, clumsy as she is, I'm sure Maya understands. Well, I knew it was the most important treasure in all of Kurain Village, so I tried as hard as I could to fix it. Fortunately, the shards were pretty big. And that's when the I am got changed to Ami. I, I didn't know how it was originally written, but any sane person fixin fixing it would have assumed it said Ami. Any sane person? Really? Pearls. She said she wasn't very good at spelling. Anyway, I put the urn into the storeroom and no one had seen it since then. But there's something I don't get. When we first came here, I didn't see any paint stains. Well, that's because it was so ugly and embarrassing. I used the golden statue to cover it. The Ami face statue. Aha! The first time we came down here. It was on the night that the sacred urn was stolen. But Mr. Nick... There were no paint marks on the walls or floor of the warehouse when we were here. Well, there's a good reason for that. The day of the crime around, mo around noon. That golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training training hall. A and I realized that the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. That's why I put it where you first saw it. I see. Now it makes perfect sense. Um, but there's still one thing I find strange. What is it, Pearl? The day after the yarn was stolen, we came here again. In that time, the statue had been moved and the paint was clearly clearly visible. She's right about that. Oh, Miss Andrews? Huh? What? I, uh, I don't know anything about that. I placed it there to cover the paint, so why would I move it again? Well, then who was it? Who would have done it and why? Well, I'm gonna check, like, how, less, how long the next, uh chapters are, or whatever. Half an hour? Maybe? Something like that. Well, the 
and who was it? Who would have done it and why? The day before the theft, the statue was definitely closer to the door. And the next day it was moved. But why? It looks like there's some connection between the sacred urn and the murder case. Why? Why do you think so, Nick? Because that night, the real thief, Rhonda Light, was at KP Security. So then why did another Mask the Mask show up here? A lot of different things are pointing to one undeniable fact. One undeniable fact? The murder trial is starting tomorrow, but... It looks like that thief is going to be making another appearance. Oh, two chapters left. You can really tell I'm not into this right now, but I don't care. I'm gonna power through. Hopefully I can get this done in like around an hour, maybe. Hey, Nick! What is, th what is this time? I don't believe how many people are here for the trial. Well, it is a murder case. What are you talking about? They're here for the trial next door. Next door? Why don't you know this, Nick? Huh, they're having Detective Abmi's trial today. Detective Abmi? They say they're going to try him as Mask the Mask. Already? That was fast. Why, I'd love to see Mask the Mask's trial. I know who this... <laughs> By the way, where's Pearls? When she went back home, she said she can't neglect her training anymore. Oh, that has to be Ron. No, you don't like me. Rose has really gotten into her training lately, huh? Yeah, ever since that incident last year. Please, don't ignore me. Oh, Mr. Delight. Good morning. No one likes me. No one would notice me even if I killed someone. Come on, don't be silly. Wait a sec. You don't mean you're the murderer. No, no. No, I'm just a poor thief. No, wait. That's not right. A thief can't really be poor. Now, let's see. According to Mr. Delight, from his record, or from his second crime on, he was following a bunch of set plans. Plans that someone had been sending to him to, to help him commit the heists. Do you really think there's a connection between the thief and the murder, Nick? It's possible, but today's trial is a race against the clock. Huh? How come? Let's just take our time like always. I'm afraid that's not an option. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. You ready? Preparation is the last refuge of the week. Okay, settle down, everyone. Let's begin with your opening statement, Mr. Godot. Ugh, he's got the judge in the palm of his hand. Yet again. Wonderlight is simply too young to be sent to war. And that's all. I'm afraid I have no idea what that means, Mr. Godot. Ha! Then you need to get out more, Your Honor. Life is war, but that is exactly why you must be more precise in your wording. And that's all my statement means. You understand now, right? Yes. Well then, let me briefly summarize the details of this case. Now the judge is taking charge like he knows what's going on for a change. The victim is Kane Bullard, CEO of KB Security. His body was found in the safe at approximately 9 a.m. on the morning of the 13th. However, the time of death was estimated as 1 a.m. of the previous day. And that's when our little lost kitten dropped the ball. That little lost kitten is, of course, the defendant. Very well then, Mr. Godot, please call your first witness. I never drink more than 17 cups of coffee during any given trial, but the first one is always the best. Um, Mr. Godot, your witness. Okay then, let's hear what the defendant, Mr. Ronda Light, has to say for himself. 
They really fucking, like, lost an opportunity of just having him call a fucking coffee cup. <laughs> As the witness. <laughs> the defendant? Well, Mr. Wright, does the defense have any objections? It may be a bit of a, a disadvantage having the defendant testify, but... I remember when Mia was defending me. She allowed me to testify so she could do the cross-examination. She put a lot of trust in me back then. We have no objections, Your Honor. The defense will allow Mr. Delight to testify. Ha. Huh. You got gut strikes. Alright then. Mr. Ron Delight, please take the stand. You did it, didn't you? Yes. What? Uh, no, 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 no! Th 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 that's not true! Hmm. For a moment there, I thought we'd set the record for the shortest trial ever. Huh. Well, Mr. Delight already looks plenty guilty with that face he's making. And once he opened his big mouth, he'll probably put the last nail in his own, co in his own coffin. Ha. Huh. Very well. Now then, can you tell me something? If you didn't kill Bullard, why did you go to KB Security? Well, I... That's kind of hard to say, but I wish I could go home. Now then, let's hear some testimony about what happened. In that evening, around 1am, I went to see Mr. Bullard in his office at KB Security. The blackmail letter I got, it ordered me to go there. I'd been working for KB Security until a year ago, so I knew where his office was. 1am, the exact time the murder took place. The weak get washed away by the tides of fate. The strong drink it up. Ha! It's bitter today, too. Just like my destiny. You never know that from the way he's chugging it down. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you please. Here and here. It ordered you there? It was the first time I'd gotten a blackmail letter that ordered me to go somewhere. Does that mean you've gotten other blackmail letters, letters then? Well, of course. They'd say things like, steal this or take that. Ah, <laughs> why don't you save those for later, Mr. Delight? Please don't say any more. Now, what should I do? It's harder. So, what did the blackmail letter in question say? That bring $50,000. Money, yeah. A perfect motive for committing murder. Oh, but wait, wait! I never intended to pay that money anyway. Oh, is that right? After all, he had nothing to hold over my head. I had nothing to be afraid of. Hmm, an important point indeed. I did just money. Yes, sir. Huh. A muddy mudskipper in outer space has a better chance of surviving than I do. Press this. Just... What were you being blackmailed about anyway? I forgot to read what it said, sorry. And the blackmail letter said if you don't want your identity revealed, correct? I'm sure it was referring to the whole mask to mask thing. But I wasn't worried. Mr. Bowler didn't have anything on me. He didn't? Anyway, I don't care what anyone says about me. Just as long as Desi believes in me. So that's why Mr. Light didn't believe he was Mask the Mask. That's why I knew they were just hollow threats. Huh. Oh wait. The black the black man threat didn't scare me. I wasn't it wasn't going to cause me trouble or anything. Uh Oh, this is the one I you used to be a security chief for KB Security, right? Yes, that's right. A security chief? You? And yet, a year ago, you were fired without notice. Revenge for an old grudge? A perfect motive for murder, wouldn't you say? Hmm. This isn't good. Maybe I should change the subject. Why he was fired. Mr. Delight, please tell us why you were fired from your job. Well... The world is filled with those who have said, I wish I had never asked that. Okay, then I take it back. 
Defendant, please answer the question. I, well, I needed money. You needed money? Um, well, you see, Dessie loves to spend it. It's kind of her hobby. Not exactly the best hobby in the world, huh, Nick? My salary wasn't nearly enough. So, I stole data from the company. Come again? KB Security has a lot of security info on all sorts of companies. And since I was the security team chief, I stole some data and sold it. Mr. Bullard found out and I was fired immediately. What? I wish I had never asked that. I was somehow able to keep it secret and made it seem like I had quit on my own. What is it, Nick? You don't look so good. Someone who brings harm to their company is fired as punishment. You do well to remember that. I mean... I'm like... Eh. I have mixed feelings about this because like... I understand that he like did it out of love but like... What the fuck? If you have to like... Resort to... Like... Fucking larceny... To uh... Keep your partner happy... Is it worth it? I personally don't think so. But... Ron baby, you do you, you do you. You do well to remember that. He sure told you. So you admit that you stole data from your company, is that correct? Yes, I'm sorry. This is a very important fact, please add it to your testimony. Oh man, this whole thing just took a big turn for the worse. Crashed and blew up. It's gonna take the jaws of life to rip this case from the clutches of disaster. You fired me for selling company secrets, but Desi doesn't know about that. Nor... Uh... Hmm, there wasn't much of the, to this test to his testimony, was there? Sounds like he's avoiding something. At least that's what it sounds like to me. Uh-oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. We better be careful. But if we don't find a way to make him spill the beans, we'll never get closer to the truth. Yeah. Okay, and then I have to go here, and I have to present Desi. Mr. Delight, what you said just now doesn't match what you told me yesterday. Huh? What doesn't? I think you must have you must have been scared, very scared, of having a certain person find out your secret. Oh. A certain person? Mr. Zeray Delight, the defendant's wife. Oh, but, but I... Listen to me, my Desi, she's... Looks like if I just sit back and relax, the fun will end before it truly begins. Mm, Gado. Yes, we know. It was all your wife's fault. What do you mean? Mr. Delight stole company data to pay for his wife's spending habit, for which he was fired. Unable to face his own wife. Someone used his dirty little secret to blackmail him. And that is how this murder came about. Oh. Hmm. No, everything is falling neatly into place for him. Don't talk about my Desi like that. Or you'll be sorry. Well, it seems that we've learned a great deal of things here so far. What do you think, Nick? I didn't think it was possible to get so thoroughly whipped in just 20 minutes. Clearly, there was sufficient motive for murder. He stole data for his wife and he killed to protect his secret. A family man who cared just a little too much. The motive is clear. Let's move on. Uh -huh. What happened at the crime scene at one in the morning, Mr. Delight? Come now, tell us. We're all ears. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. Suddenly, I was hit on the forehead. After that, I remember being a bit dazed. I 
if I hadn't been wearing that, I would have been killed. When I came to, Mr. Bullard was lying there, dead. I see, suddenly hit on the forehead. Huh. I believe the detective from yesterday provided similar testimony. He said that Mask the Mask struck him on the head from behind. Of course, since Abby turned out to be the culprit himself. That was all a lie. Ha. Huh. No one's going to believe a pathetic lie like that. What are you saying? I really was attacked! We'll find out if what you say is true or not during the cross-examination. Got that, Mr. Trites? Don't go easy just because he's your client. If I see any sign that you are, I'll treat you to another cup of my special blend. You don't need to worry about that, Mr. Godot. I have faith in Ron. I know he didn't do it. If I hadn't been wearing that, that? Could you please clarify to what you are referring to? Why, my Mask the Mask costume, of course. Wait just a moment. Mask the Mask? Uh, oh, did I forget to mention it before? Just to be on the safe side, I dressed as Mask the Mask. Mask the Mask. And then I descended upon this office at, at the CEO of KB Security. What? Nick, did you know about this? He never told me this. I don't recall him. I don't recall him ever mentioning it to me either. Even I didn't know that. It seems our little friend really loves to keep secrets. I'm sorry. I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. Wait, that's not right. Um, you know how sometimes things just slip your mind. Ha! Huh, my sixth cup of coffee is staring staring up at me coldly. At any rate, we can't ignore this new piece of information. Witness, please correct your testimony. Uh, 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 uh. I'd have been killed if I hadn't been wearing my mask, mask the mask costume. Why were you dressed up as mask the mask? Why? Because I'm mask the mask, of course. What are you talking about? Mask the mask's trial is being held next door. Ha! Huh, yes, I, I guess so. Anyway, at the time. I thought I was being blackmailed over the Mask the Mask issue. So I thought I should go as him, just to be safe. Oh boy. Let me tell you, it's a real pain to move around with that cape. That's why I took a lot why it took a lot longer than I'd expected. It took a lot longer? What is he talking about? That's harder. Um, what do you mean by took a lot longer? Oh opening the safe, of course. My cape got caught on the safe door, you see. This all happened when I was hiding Mr. Bullet's body. <laughs> what was that? Back up a second. Yes? You were the one that hid the body in the safe? Um, well, yeah. Inconceivable! Why? Just why? What, what reason could you have? What were you thinking? Question. When does someone toss their dirty shorts in the washing machine? Uh, what? The answer is simple. When they take them off. As usual, I have no idea what you're saying. Do you mean that Mr. Delight hid the body because he's the murderer? Ha! Huh. So you're not as stupid as you look. This metaphor this time was really obscure. Mr. Wright, you don't mean that you knew about this whole safe business. Do you? Uh, well, yes. Why am I the only one not in the loop here? Witness, make sure you add this to the testimony. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, looks like a storm front is moving in over the fair weather judge. Oh, uh, no, my nose is itching again. <laughs> I panicked and hid the body in the safe. It took about ten minutes. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Your Honor, could you please take a look at this record? How long might this be? The record for the emergency buzzer that connects the CEO's office to security. If the button in the office is pressed, the security team is supposed to come running. 
and according to this record, the buzzer was pushed once at 1.02 a.m. What? If Mr. Rhonda Light truly was the murderer, he would have ran as soon as the buzzer sounded. After all, a security guard would have been heading his way. Huh. Let's remember who we're dealing with here. He probably had no idea there were security personnel in the building. Up until one year ago, my client was working as a chief of security. There was no way he wouldn't have known about them. But as it turns out, the guard never came. And that was nothing more than a coincidence. The fact that the guard was a pathetic loser, who had just gotten punched in the face by his ex's new boyfriend, and wasn't anywhere in the vicinity was not something Mr. Delight could have known. Huh. Again, remember who we're dealing with here. It's a sure bet that Mr. Delight didn't even notice the buzzer going off. And this buzzer is extremely loud. There is no way he could have ignored something like that. If he had been unconscious. If he had been conscious, that is. Conscious? What do you mean by that? <sighs> Fine, let's hear your theory. Recall the defendant's testimony. The moment he entered the victim's office, someone attacked him. Mr. Delight said he felt dazed. I'm willing to wager that he was knocked unconscious for at least a few minutes. Unconscious? So he fainted? That's why Mr. Delight didn't know that the buzzer had sounded. And that's why he thought he had time to hide the body. So what are you trying to say? Mr. Delight was knocked out and the buzzer went off soon afterwards. Now unless my client was able to hit the buzzer while he wasn't while he was unconscious, it can only mean that there was another person in that room. That's right. Whoever it was, they knocked out Ron Delight and then pressed the buzzer. Order in the court, Mr. Wright. This... this is... This is preposterous. It was this kid. Rhonda Light is the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then who pressed the buzzer? It was... the victim, of course. He pressed the buzzer when the defendant... When the defendant attacked him. Oh my god, my ear, it hurts. He didn't die right away. He must have held on long enough to push that button. Hmm. So King Bullard sounded the buzzer himself. What is your opinion on this, Mr. Wright? I need to prove that the real criminal was there at the scene, but how? Can I prove that it wasn't King Bullard who, who sounded the buzzer? Uh, I can prove it already. The defense's opinion is this, your honor. This piece of evidence proves that it wasn't the victim who sounded the buzzer. Present the buzzer. I'm literally playing it in the fucking most boring way right now. I'm so sorry. I feel so bad about it. But I believe this is the piece of inco incontrovertible evidence you were looking for. The emergency buzzer? Is there some kind of clue on it? Absolutely not. Hey, come on now. At least give some thought to what you say before you open your mouth. The fact that there are absolutely no clues is itself a clue. Now I'm the one who's clueless. This button has no fingerprints on it. If Mr. Bullard had really pressed it himself, naturally, he would have left his fingerprints behind. Rhonda Light obviously wiped them off. Why would he? A guard could have come in at any moment. He touched that button. I know he did. The defendant, Mr. Delight, was dressed as Mask the Mask. And Mask the Mask always wears gloves. What reason could he possibly have to wipe the button free of, ham of fingerprints? Order! 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 But like, also... Um... They do know that you don't have to like, press, press a button with your fing- like, with your fingers, right? Like, you can press it with an elbow. You can- you can press it with like, the back of your hand. You can press it with like, the... 
Not, not the palm of your hand, but like the... Your wrist, I guess you could say. Like... You can press it with your head if you absolutely have to. Like... There's... There are so many ways to press a button that doesn't include your finger. <laughs> huh. It would seem... I've been forced to eat crow. I wonder what blend number crow flavored coffee is. However, if the real killer was there at the scene, well, why would that person press the emergency buzzer? Shouldn't they have run away without putting themselves in themselves in extra danger? What's with this awkward silence all of a sudden? Huh. It looks like you're fresh out of parlor tricks. They're on to you, Nick. Just give me a minute to collect my thoughts. The real culprit killed Mr. Bullard at around 1 a.m. Mr. Delight just happened to waltz in there and... in when the murder was taking place, right? The killer clobbered Mr. Delight and then sounded the buzzer. Even though security was supposed to respond right away if the buzzer was pressed, security was supposed to respond. Hmm. Time's up, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you have to say. Very well, then. Oh, -ho, you got some guts. I like that in an opponent. Why did the real killer sound the emergency buzzer? Call the security guard. The killer knew that if they pressed that button, a guard would come running. And if that was... And that was exactly what they wanted. Do you mean to say the killer called the guard on purpose? Yes, although as it turned out, he never showed up. Because he was getting his clock cleaned at, at the time. Huh, what a touching story. You're saying the killer had a change of heart and called the guard to turn himself in. No, I'm not. When that buzzer sounded, there were three people in that office. The victim, Kane Bullard, who was already dead. The defendant, Ronda Light, who was off cold. And the third person, the real killer. Hypothetically, yes. Now then, in this situation, if the real killer made an escape, what would happen? The only ones left in the room would be the victim and Ronda Light. And, and if any security guards came running in at that time, they would think that I was the murderer. Yes. That was precisely the real killer's objective. To frame Ron the light for the murder. Order! 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 Huh. It would seem... I've been made to eat my words once again. Actually, you've been... Made to do a spit take with a cup of coffee. M Mr. Wright, who was it? Who was it that tried to frame me? Uh, wait. Wait a second. I'm the one and only Mask to Mask, so... Nick, you mean the real killer is... I'm going to drag that person in here right now. But, but, who is it? I don't have any solid proof yet, but think about it. The killer knew Mr. Delight's identity. And they also knew that he had been called to KB security that night. So the killer used him to execute a well-crafted plan to murder Kane Bullard. Hmm, now then, let's hear your accusation, Mr. Wright. Who was it that framed Mr. Ronda Light for the murder of Kane Bullard? Look at me. Look at me. Detective Luke at me. He's the only one who could have done it. He's Detective. Luke at me? You mean... Mask the mask did it. Your Honor, the person being tried in the court next to us is not Mask the Mask at all. He is, in actuality, the true murderer of Kane Bullard. Order! Order! M Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Theft and murder. Which is the more serious crime? They're not even close. Murder is, more se is the more serious crime, of course. It's a capital crime subject to a capital punishment. Please remember the trial from yesterday, if you would. 
and looked at me, confessed there was a huge commotion in the courtroom. Of course, a famous detective was unmasked as, well, um, as Mask the Mask. Instead of being convicted of murder, he was found guilty of grand larceny. And that was his true objective all along. To be found guilty? Mask the Mask had the perfect alibi for when the murder took place. He was stealing the urn at Lord Lake Taylor. In other words, being found guilty as Mask the Musk was Luke Abney's airtight, watertight, and unassailable alibi. A guilty verdict. As an alibi? You know, it's almost time. For what? For Luke Abney's verdict. It was, it was a pretty simple trial after all. If we're going to stop this trial and stall that one, we need to do it now. Of course. Just assuming you have proof that, de that the detective was the one who committed the murder. Mr. Luke Hapmi's trial has indeed attracted the attention of the entire country. If we were to intrude and fail to provide adequate proof at the th uh, of his true crime, Mr. Delight would be left with no grounds for appeal. Am I really sure about this? Ha. Huh. I bet it's only good when your life's the ante. Mr. Wright, I I believe in you. Mr. Delight. So, so please, I'm begging you. Thanks, but my decision will determine the rest of your life. Can I really risk your life like this? Phoenix. What was that? Don't stray, Phoenix. For your client, take the path of trust. That voice! It, it sounds like... Mia! Your Honor, the defense requests an immediate recess. Huh. So that's your answer, huh? Very well. I've decided as well. And this court will now take a 20 minute recess. Mr. Wright, when we return, please summon Mr. Luke F. Mia to the stand. Yes, Your Honor. No, god damn it, the fucking website is experienced. No. <laughs> no, fucking perfect timing. Oh my god, fuck that. It's fine. <laughs> well, sorry, detective at me. Huh. I have to say, Mr. Payne, you performed splendidly. Oh no, Sir Detective Apme, you are the one who... That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. This court finds the defendant look at me. Apparently that's his, his voice now. Wait! Don't hand down your verdict yet, please! Well, well, Sir Lawyer. Welcome to my courtroom. I forgot his voice already. <laughs> Maybe I should just like go with the judge, but make him Canadian. Because this dude is Canadian. I don't know if you could tell. Who is this, Jose, eh? My name is Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. And I wish to file an accusation against this man. Luke at me. Accusation? You accuse Mask to Mask. That man is not Mask the Musk. He's just a ruthless murderer. What? Oh, this is a fucking joke. <laughs> Sorry, this side is experiencing technical difficulties. Why now? Why now when I'm actually using it? <laughs> Fucking damn it. Ah, last chapter. My sis. I'm gonna check if I if, if I can get to it on uh
Okay, apparently I can... Ha! I can get it on my phone. <laughs> Yeehaw. Okay, or what if I just do, uh... Okay, no, it doesn't work. Why does it not work? I don't understand. It fucking works on my phone, but... Huh? It's just that one. Okay, you know what? Whatever, it's fine. I could have sworn I heard Mia's voice. So then, she's still alive inside your heart. Nikki boy! Oh, Mr. Light. Is it true that Detective is the real killer? To be honest, we don't have any definite proof. But he's the only one who could have done it. But wasn't he at Lordly Taylor that night? Not to mention, we don't exactly know his motive. I mean, why would Detective Abney want to kill Kane Bullard? Oops, it's almost time. Better get back to the courtroom. I need to find some solid proof. It's gotta happen sooner rather than later. Okay. Now then, this court is back in session. Mr. Luke at me. Please take the stand. Well, well, how do you do, sir lawyer? I never would have thought to see you acting so recklessly. I couldn't let them hand down your verdict just yet. Not when it would have given you your perfect alibi. An alibi by the name of Mask the Musk. I'm sorry, I'm afraid even the great Luke Apme has no idea what you mean. Of course I have been in the next courtroom ever since 10 o'clock this morning. I'm afraid there's no way I could know what's been going on in here. You've been in the defendant's seat all day long, correct? Being tried as Mask the Mask. Indeed, it's truly child's play to fool the ignorant masses. Not only did the poor fools ask me to protect their valuables, they even gave me a generous reward upon returning their own property to them. Take this red diamond ring that sparkles upon my divine finger, for example. So you can continue to insist that you are, in fact, Mask the Mask. Of course. Very well then, look at me. Let us begin with this simple question. On October 12th at 1am, Kane Bullard was murdered. Where were you at the time? One without knowledge lacks even the knowledge that he should be ashamed of himself. But don't worry, I will not hold it against you, Sir Judge. Um, thanks. Right, Mr. Apney. The night of the murder. Speak. We're all ears. As you wish, sir, prosecutor. I was stealing the urn as Master Musk, just as I announced I would. I had more than enough time to prepare. It was a pathetically easy job. A photograph contains no words, but in this case, one turned out to be my witness. Time, the time at which the camera captured Master Musk was the same time as the murder. Uh, it seems the main point of discussion will be this photo of the crime scene. Everything else up until now was all part of his plan. There has to be a secret to this picture as well. Even the great Master Musk cannot be in two places at once. Now then, if you'll excuse me, I have a verdict to receive. Unfortunately, Mr. Atme, we still have to do your cross-examination. A fool is too foolish to know that he is a fool. I think he's trying to say that you're full of it, Nick. Francisca much? The only thing that's full of it is his alibi. Okay, so I have to press 2. I believe Adrian Andrews hired you at one point. That's right. That was over 20 days ago, if I'm not mistaken. You sent the calling card to Lordly Taylor 10 days before the heist. 
That would mean you sent out the day the card after you began your security watch, right? Indeed, there was no reason why I couldn't do both jobs at once. It was the perfect opportunity to steal my la latest target. I see. You truly are evil, aren't you? Yes, evil is what I am. Hey Nick, isn't there something odd about this? Hmm? Detective Abney was always proud of his ace detective skills, right? But if the urn was stolen from Lordly Taylor while he was the only one watching it, he'd have no way to maintain his perfect ace detective persona. You know, that's true. It is kind of odd. And also four. About the camera that took this photograph. Oh, come now. It's all too clear what you're thinking. Huh? You think I altered the timestamp on the photograph, don't you? I'm afraid that's impossible. The camera was set up by Lordly Taylor, and on top of that, it was Lordly Taylor's staff that printed that picture's data. Unfortunately for the defense, there's no way that picture could have been altered. I see. Looks like I'd better find something else that could be suspicious. So this alibi is false? It has to be, or he couldn't have killed Mr. Bullard at KB Security. Okay, let me just try it again because it's kind of difficult with my phone. Back. Why is it... Try waiting a few minutes. Okay, sure, fine, whatever. spotting anything unusual. There are two possibilities. Either the mask the mask in the photo is a fake, or the photo itself is. Okay, now I can press the third one. Which is this one. So by photograph, you mean this piece of evidence here. Is that correct? Indeed it is. And that's it. The very thing that proves I committed the crime. The very thing that proves you committed the crime. Surely even you understand by now. Lordly Taylor provided that camera, and there is no way I could have tampered with it. That means I could not have killed Kane Bullard, unless I had an accomplice. Hmm. Come on, think long and hard about that night. The basement warehouse, and this picture that supposedly captures it. It's gotta be here. Isn't there something funny about this picture? You bet there is. Apparently there is. Are you implying that this picture is a fake? You bet I am. There's definitely something strange about this picture. We took a look around the basement warehouse that night before the theft took place. And there's something in this photo that doesn't match my memory of that night. Very well. Then let's hear what you have to say. What about this photograph do you find fi funny? Uh, yeah. The funny part... It's right here. Why this? This is a blood stain. Ah, a blood! Now this case is getting interesting. Um, not exactly. This stain is actually pink paint. Oh, just paint. And peach colored at that. From blood to peaches, the judge sure loves going on his wild tangents. The problem with this photograph is not the paint. The problem is when you consider the layout of the basement warehouse. It turns out that something that should be there is nowhere to be seen. Well, Mr. Wright, what is supposed to be in this picture instead of the paint stains? This. The supervisor of the treasure exhibit st stated the following. Well, there's a good reason for that. On the day of the crime, around noon, that golden statue just happened to arrive from the mountain training hall. I realized that the statue would be the perfect size for covering up the paint stains. That's why I put it where you first saw it. I myself was there the night that the theft took place, and saw the statue in that spot. If this picture was truly taken on that night, then this statue should have been there. But when I went there the day after the theft, that statue of the old hag was sitting in the corner. Hmm. Perhaps it was somehow pushed there accidentally. 
Your Honor, this statue is slightly larger than yourself and quite heavy. It would take more than, a, and an, accident, than an accidental push to move it that distance. Huh, in that case, can you prove it? Can you give us the rhyme and reason as to why that statue was moved that height? Can you do it, Nick? Never mind who moved it. The real question is, why did they move it? Well, Mr. Wright, I hope you are prepared with your answer. Now then, who was the one that moved the golden statue on the night of the crime? Oh. As I thought. Look at me. The one who moved the statue is none other than look at me. Come now, sir lawyer. There you go again on one of your strange delusions. Mr. Wright, what basis do you have for your strange delusions? It's very simple. The witness was the only one in the basement warehouse that night. That is indeed very simple. However... Why would I want to move a heavy golden statue? The reason for moving the golden statue... Here's where a battle really begins. Well, Mr. Wright, what reason did the witness have to move that statue? The reason can be found here in this photograph. Look at me, you pretended to be Mask the Mask. To create an alibi by showing you where at you were at Lordly Taylor's that night. But this photograph contains a single fatal flaw. If the statue had been there, your lie would be exposed like cheap film at the drugstore. That is why you had to move the statue. My single fatal flaw? Interesting theory. Please enlighten us. And just where in this picture does this lie exist? Mm. Okay. Naturally, the lie in this photo is in the timestamp. What do you mean? I'll tell you exactly what I mean. On the night in question, Luke Apme went to KB security and murdered Kane Bullard. Therefore, it's obvious. It would have been impossible for him to have been at the Lordly Taylor at this time. But what does that have to do with the statue being moved? Remember, if you will, Your Honor. When was the statue placed besides the warehouse door? Well... The statue was taken down to the warehouse on the day of the crime. And it was placed there in order to cover up the paint. Exactly. Luke Apme had already decided on the time when he was going to kill the victim. And so in order to create an alibi for that time, he took this picture days before the murder took place. What the? Of course, the statue hadn't yet been brought down to the basement warehouse yet. <laughs> so on the day of the crime, Mr. Abney must have been quite nervous. As nervous as a long-tailed cat in a rocking chair factory, so to speak. Why? Because something that wasn't supposed to be there had been brought down and placed where it wasn't supposed to be. And that... It's why Luke Apme had to move the statue on the night of the murder. He did it to make the room match with the way it had been in his photo. Order! Order! Mr. Apme, is this true? One moment, Your Honor. Have you forgotten this? What's that? the data for the basement warehouse computer. According to this, the camera did indeed go off on the night of the crime. Objection! It's true that the camera had been set up by the Lord Taylor's staff. However, the program used to manage that data was yours. That alone would have allowed you to tamper with the data. He did it again! He hit his gavel! I'll be with the music, that was amazing. Order, order, Mr. Godot, what is the meaning of this? Godot, I warned you about making me wait. Now put that coffee down. My 11th cup. I've promised to drink no more than 17 during a trial. Which means I'm still good to the last drop. However, the defense has a very good point. A good point? So what? 
We are all but travelers on the road of infinite points. I think he's got his points mixed up with his other points. So we say this photograph was taken ahead of time, and that the statue was moved in order to make it match. That's a very interesting idea. However, there's one thing that can't be denied. Which is... That it's only a possibility. Men that are trapped by the chains of maybe... Can never reach their dreams. That, that's very true. No way, don't fall for that, your honor. Hey, Mr. Damask. Yes? If there's no funny business in your actions as Master Damask, there should be no problem with you telling us your strategy. So let's hear it. Yes, please provide this court with your testimony. About your plan to steal the sacred urn. I first received a request from Lordly Taylor about 20 days ago. My urn w the urn, my urn, the urn was placed in the box and zvarri! It was then sent to the warehouse. Hence, I was actually unable to see the urn for myself until the day of the crime. I knew it was an extremely valuable treasure, so, so I sent my card 10 days beforehand. I then handled security by myself to ensure that my crime would go smoothly. At last, I held the urn in my hands for the first time at 1am on October 12th. That's pretty much all stuff we've heard before, isn't it? Yeah, but... You will find the truth hidden in the nuggets of the new information he gave. Witness! You're sure there are no mistakes this time? Zvari! Right, very well then. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Are you there? There, 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 there. Objection. Very girl-friendly. Mr. Atney, if you really are Mask the Musk, then you also wrote this calling card, correct? But of course. Is there a problem with that calling card? Allow me to read a passage from the calling card that Master Mask had written. Take good care of the speckled urn. Now, the speckled here. Surely refers to this pink pattern on the sacred urn. Yes, that's true, but so what? Truth be told, there is no way that Mask and Mask could have known about this pattern. What do you mean? And this pink spotted pattern on the urn is actually nothing more than paint stains. Paint stains? And these stains did not appear until after the urn had been taken to Lordly Taylor. Hmm. I'm not finding this joke to be very funny, Mr. Trite. The day that the sacred urn was taken to the warehouse, the urn was broken due to human error, or should I say an error-prone human. And that's when the pink paint got on the urn. You can't be serious. And yet this calling card clearly mentions the paint pattern. Which means, Detective Apney had seen this urn long before the crime ever took place. In fact, he saw it when this photo was taken. And because this photo is a fake, your alibi for the night of the murder no longer holds water. Wag 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 wag. <laughs> Sorry. Witness, do you have anything to say for yourself? Mm hmm. All right, that did it. He's broken. Um, Nick, I think it's still a little early for a victory pulse. Huh? Huh. It's so sad. No one has any conviction in these days. C conviction, you say? Yesterday, we all decided unanimously that this man was Mask the Musk, and now we're calling him a murderer. You don't think we're being a tad fickle? That's a good point! No way! Don't fall for that too, Your Honor! You say that Luke Athney was the one who killed Kane Bullard. Then let me ask you this. Why would he do that? An excellent point. Motive, Mr. Wright, motive. Might you, my, might you, my... 
might do my marry murderous motive manifest. Oh, okay, I get it now. I, you, okay. Might do my marry murderous motive manifest. Nick, he's getting his second win. If he prepared an alibi and pinned his crime on Ronda Light, as you say, he must have had a very strong motive for murder. The only one with any motive we've seen is Ronda Light. Isn't that right, Detective? Indeed. According to my own research, the boy's motive's clear. Without a motive, it's nearly impossible to prove guilt in a murder case. Now then, maybe you can enlighten us as to what the defendant's motives were. I'd be honored to, Sir Oldtimer. They're doing everything they can to make Ron look suspicious. Despite our lack of hard information, this may be our only chance. I, look at me, had no point of contact with the victim whatsoever. Kane Bullock decided to investigate Mask the Mask and simply mistook who he was. It was Mr. Bullard who wrote the Black Bill letter and sent it to Ron Delight. And it was again Mr. Bullard who harbored a grudge against Mr. Delight for his betrayal. Mr. Bullard's mistake is quite excusable. The defendant truly believes he is Mask the Mask. That is why Mr. Delight saw it fit to kill Kane Bullard. Truly a tragedy. So the victim, Kane Bullard, blackmailed the defendant. This is the blackmail letter found in the defendant's apartment. A handwriting test confirms that Mr. Bullard was indeed the one who wrote the letter. What? Very well, Mr. Wright. Begin your cross-examination. Okay, it was number three. Yeah, I'm presenting like my letter. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Detective Apme? Well, if, if it's just a few, I guess it's alright. When you said that this letter was addressed to Ron Delight, I couldn't help but notice one major contradiction. Contradiction? I don't know where a, where a walking contradiction like you gets off saying things like that. You're one to talk. At times like these, men are made to express themselves with their fists. Why don't you show us what you've got there, Junior? <laughs> I'm like reading ahead and like... <laughs> Indeed, time to man up, Mr. Wright. Show us the contra contradicting evidence in the content of the blackmail letter. Is it this? Newspaper clipping? Yeah, it should be. Take that. Take a good look at this newspaper clipping. Wait, uh, what was- what did that say? Show me your true identity revealed. Take that red diamond you received the other day instead. Hmm, interesting. It contains a picture of the Tear of Eminon, the stolen jewel. What about it? The problem is this jewel's color. Color? I'm not much for discussing color myself. According to the clipping, the color of the stolen jewel was blue. However, in the blackmail letter, a totally different jewel is mentioned. I'll take that red diamond you received the other day. R red? Which means... The red diamond described in the blackmail letter. It's not the tear of Eminon that Mask the Mask stole at all. Objection. And your point is, Mr. Trite. So you are trying to say that this blackmail letter was intended for someone else. That is what you're trying to say, right, Trite? That is what you're trying to say, right, Mr. Wright? Well, that is what you're trying to say... Say? Right, Nick? Yes. This is who Kane Bullard was actually blackmailing. Okay. Now 
naturally. It was you, Detective Appy. Do you have some sort of basis for the claim? You have been personally involved in every single Mask the Mouse case. And in the last case, you recovered what was stolen. And received a jewel. As your reward. A, a jewel? Probably the one wrapped conspicuously around your finger. That red diamond ring! And that is a diamond referred to in the letter. Which means that Kane Buller wrote that letter in order to blackmail you. Order! Order in the court! Um, I'm order, I say! It seems you've gone too far with your childish, pr childish pranks, Mr. Trite. Uh-oh, I don't like the way you said that. Came Bullard blackmailing Luke at me. Are you for real? Yes, I am. Nick, come on, stand up to him. Then answer me this. The blackmail letter contains the following passage. You don't want your identity revealed to the world. Yes, it clearly does. Came Bullard threatened to make Luke at me's identity public knowledge. An identity he wanted to keep a secret. So just what was that identity? I may kill Kane Bullard because he was afraid of his secret becoming known. the identity he wanted to keep secret. This is what it all comes down to, Nick. The identity that Luke Apme wanted to so desperately keep secret was his identity as blackmailer. Luke Apme was a blackmailer. Objection. Hey now, isn't that a little different from what you've been saying? You said that Kane Bullard was the one blackmailing Luke Apme. Are you saying that Apme was blackmailing someone else on top of that? Ugh, you have to admit, that does sound a little odd. It's not odd, it's the only thing that makes any sense. Kane Bullard was blackmailing Luke Apne. But Ron Delight was also being blackmailed by a certain someone. So did you start receiving blackmail letters after this incident? Yes, just a few days after the Tear of Eminon heist. After that, I started getting the plans in the mail. I received plans from some very kind person. Incredibly detailed plans. Detailed plans? In which case, that would mean that Wanda Light was actually Mask to Mask. That is what we are claiming. Someone else came up with the plans and had Mr. Delight steal his targets for him. And that someone was none other than Luke Apme. Shh! Silence! Okay, I see it. All coming clear. What is? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year, careless with the tendency to jump to conclusions. Am I wrong? How did you? You say that I, Luke Apney, was blackmailing Ron Delight, in which case I would naturally know all about his relation to Mask the Mask. Well, yes. Ron Delight started receiving plans from his second crime onward, correct? Which means I learned of his identity when he committed that first crime. Good point. You certainly couldn't have blackmailed him otherwise. In that case, let's see some hot, bitter evidence. During the first crime, how did Luke Apme know that Ron Delight the 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 <laughs> was Master Musk? It's a newspaper clipping, newspaper clipping, newspaper clipping. I think I see it. See what? When you were in grade school, you received the same report card every year. Getting into lots of mischief, trying to be the center of attention. What do you mean? This newspaper clipping. It has a picture of you and Ron Delight in his guard uniform. It seems that Mask the Mask didn't just disappear into thin air. He just took off his outfit and hid it in the bucket. That, that sounds far too stupid to be true. Correct. With a trick like that, he couldn't fool a baby, let alone an ace detective. And that's when you figured it out, Mr. Rappi. 
And that's when you learn that under his mask, Mask the Mask really was Ron the Light. What the? Wasn't he supposed to be Mask the Mask? Not only that, it looks like he wasn't even an ace detective. Can't believe it. He was just simply a, a slimy blackmailer. What a fraud trying to pass himself off as an ace detective. Why, you? How dare you expose me like that? Why, I. I mean, I've never blackmailed anyone in my life. I'm a famous and proud ace detective and an old soul. Mask the mask. Why can't you understand that? I'm afraid you are neither a proud thief nor an ace detective. You're a blackmailer and a murderer. That is your true identity. Why you? How dare you? Oh. It's enough to make one laugh. I got that one. It would seem we finally arrived at the real answer. That was quite a performer performance by Mr. Abney. Bailiff, please prepare a cell for Mr. Abney. Objection. The hammer that strikes too fast has no time to aim. What do you mean? I'm already prepared to deliver my ruling. Allow me to say one thing. I will be the one to judge. Sir, you're a prosecutor. Sit the fuck down and let me do my job. Alright? You don't get much more in your f face and- oh. You don't get- You don't get much more in your face than that. It appears that your claws weren't quite sharp enough, Mr. Trites. What do you- it's true that you've proven a lot of things. Things like Luke Apney was a filthy blackmailer. And that he wasn't at Lord Lee Taylor the night of the murder. That's right. That's why he's the one who killed Mr. Bull- But... There's still one thing you have yet to prove. What's that? Just because he wasn't at the warehouse doesn't mean he wasn't at the murder scene. Therefore, if you can't prove that his that this pitiful excuse for a man was at KB security, then I don't see how the verdict can be delivered. No. Oh, no way! Order. Order in the court. Well, Mr. Wright. This is it. This is the final round. I gotta prove that Apney was at Mr. Bullard's office on that night. But, can you really prove that? That's long enough, Mr. Trites. I want to hear your answer. That night, Luke Abney was at KB security, and the defense... I... I can't prove it. Just as I thought. But, if we hear more of Detective Abney's testimony... Objection. Unfortunately, that's as far as you go, Mr. Trites. What do you mean? I won't allow for any more testimony. That's what I mean. What? Have you forgotten? Luke Apney is is here after we interrupted his interrupted his own trial, and you have failed to prove that he committed the murder. I think it's time for this witness to return to his own trial and face his guilty verdict as Mask the Musk. No. Well, now, sir lawyer, it seems that love wins out in the end after all. I am the Ace Detective, as well as Mask the Musk, my verdict will verify that. Just as Ron Delights will verify that he is the true murderer. I declare that with the full force of my Ace Detectiveness. Order! Order in the court! Not enough deliberation over this witness! I can't believe this! At this rate, Ron is. Don't give up now, Nick! We still have tomorrow. We can look for more evidence and. By then, it'll be too late. Huh? Why? Double jeopardy. One of the basic rules of any court of law. Double jeopardy? Should a defendant be tried and found innocent in court, that defendant cannot be tried again for the same crime. 
And this is a fundamental rule of all courts. And it, and it applies to this witness as much as it applies to everyone else. Anyone else. Mr. Abney will be found guilty in a matter of minutes. Guilty as Master Mosk. Which means he will be innocent as far as the murder of King... Oh, sorry, that was... That was he will be innocent as far as the murder of King Bullard is concerned. Away! The fact that you were unable to prove Mr. Abney's guilt of that crime here means that he will never again be tried as King Bullard's murderer. Uh, uh. Now there's nothing I can possibly do to win. Even if Ron is proclaimed to be innocent, the real killer, Luke Abney, will go free. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. And as long as there is no more testimony, I'm afraid I have to declare that there will be no further questioning of this witness. Are there any objections? Then I hereby end the cross-examination of Luke Acme. I think I see it. Your Honor, when you were a child, this is what was on your report card every year. It has poor hearing and often makes mistakes as a result. How did you? Phoenix, raise your head up high. Have you forgotten what I used to tell you? A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. That voice. No way. Long time no see, Phoenix. M Mia! This is the true power of the Kurain channeling technique. I know that it's really Maya who's standing before me, but right now, she's my mentor, Mia Fey. Now, let's do this. But, but there's nothing more we can do, Mia. Without any more testimony, I can't cross-examine. Not yet. The testimony's not over yet. W what do you mean? Your Honor, just now you said something very interesting. You have cross-examined every statement the witness has made here today. Yes, that's true, but unfortunately, Your Honor, you're forgetting something. Earlier, after the last cross-examination, this witness made a number of remarks. As a lawyer, it seems that love wins out in the end after all. I'm the ace detective as well as Mask the Mask. My verdict will verify that. Just as Ron Delights will verify that he is a true murderer. I declare that with the full force of my ace detectiveness. Yes, but these comments appear to have no importance whatsoever. Very well, and we shall prove their importance via cross-examination. At any rate, as long as the witness has made these remarks, we, the defense, assert our right to question them. Is that alright with you, prosecutor? Is something the matter, Mr. Godot? Uh, nothing. Oh, sir lawyer, it looks like you're one step too late. If you think such falsehoods will do anything to me, look at... Let's hear it. Huh? It's true that the witness made some remarks, so then... Let's hear this last bit of cross-examination. Mr. Godot, what are you... Very well then, Mr. Luke Apney. I'm going to allow the defense to cross-examine your earlier remarks. The defense would like to hear why you declared the defendant to be the true murderer. So please, give us one last bit of testimony. I... Uh... Phoenix, this is it. This is our absolute last chance. Yes, Chief... Oh my god, this is a fucking long ass testimony. <sighs> Indeed, it is true that I was not at Lordly Taylor. I had to leave to see about another vitally important job request. I had known about the date beforehand, so I had this photograph re readied. My brilliant deduction was what informed me that the true culprit was Ron Delight. And thanks to the keycard and wallet, it was abundantly clear why he was there that he was there i was also able to make a deduction from the buzzer which only sounded once the button did not have any fingerprints on it why the victim would have left prince if he sounded it which means the killer sounded it mr delight was wearing his mask and mask outfit which is why he left no prince 
and the blackmail letter? The victim likely just mistook the color of the jewel. Zvari. Therefore, all the evidence points to that poor boy. His testimony actually seems to hold up pretty well. The witness's earlier remarks do not appear to have been hastily prepared. All of his points have been explained and none of them seem to contradict anything. But of course. But how did you know about the emergency buzzer? The police investigation documents went directly through me. And I always look over all the documents. It's elementary, sir lawyer. Uh -huh. Are you going to make even more trouble for us now, Sir Lawyer? I will not allow any of your usual shenanigans, Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor. We cannot pos postpone Luke Acme's trial any longer. This is your last chance. Hang on a sec. Just one chance? Ha! Huh. It seems that the party's about to begin. Well, Phoenix, there isn't any evidence that contradicts with that testimony. So it would seem... What do you mean, so it would seem? Listen, Phoenix, pointing out contradictions doesn't always mean you have to present evidence, does it? At any rate, this is our last chance. If you can't point out the case-breaking contradiction, you lose. That's all there is to it. Cup number 17, the last cup. Seems like the time has come to put an end to this trial. To find a fatal contradiction in this testimony. And I need to point it out without presenting evidence. Which means all I can do is find the contradictory remark and press it. Remember, you only get one chance. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Please begin your final cross-examination. Uh, 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 uh. Ow. Oh. Hi. I'm almost done. I think, anyways. Yeah. Okay, I need to... The part where I get to run's outfit. This. And press. Press. Mr. Atme, about this last remark. You still don't get it, do you, Trite? This isn't the time to be pressing the witness on every little statement. I'm afraid you're the one who still doesn't get it, Mr. Godot. What? Mr. Abney, it seems you have finally admitted that you were in the CEO's office on the night of the murder. How can you say that? Let's review your testimony, shall we, Mr. Abney? The button did not have any fingerprints on it. Why? Mr. Delight was wearing his Mask the Mask outfit, is that correct? Indeed, that's what I said. My deductions are absolutely foolproof. More like your deductions prove that you're a fool. I... I'm sorry. Whatever do you mean? For some reason, I'm starting to get really thirsty. When exactly did we learn the fact that Ron Delight was dressed as Mask the Mask when he went to the scene of the crime? That was... um... It was just a few hours ago, back when my sixth cup was looking at me with a cold stare. Huh? Oh, did I forget to mention it before? I'm sorry, I just never had a chance to mention it up until now. That's right, the defendant had yet to tell anyone else that this fact before this morning. Therefore, the only people who should know this are those who have been watching this trial. Do you understand now, Detective Apme? There's no way that you should have known about that. You were in the next courtroom being tried as Mask the Mask. So then, enlighten us. Just how did you know about that piece of information? Ugh. Well... Come on, this detective must have known about it. He probably had plenty of chances to find out beforehand. And it's those chances that I want to discuss next. That night, 
Mr. Delight was wearing his Mask the Mask outfit. There is one and only one way for Detective Apme to have found that out. Only one? One way, you say. Please recall, if you will, Mr. Delight's testimony. When I entered the office, there was a suspicious shadow there. For a second, my client witnessed a real killer. But Mr. Delight never saw his attacker. So there's no way to tell whether or not the real killer was Luke Apme. It's with that statement that I'll turn this case on its head. Just what are you implying? Mr. Delight saw the real killer, correct? Now if you turn that statement around, it stands to reason that the real killer had also seen Rod Delight. I impossible. Detective Apney, you saw Mask the Mask at the murder scene that night. You saw him when you killed Kane Bullard and assaulted Ron the Light. That was the only way you could have known what Ron was wearing. Mess is about to fucking take off. I like how the stand stays stand still while everything else shakes. Take a good look, everyone. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. That's the same line you gave yesterday. But I think there's a little more meaning behind it this time. What an awfully complicated incident. Kane Bullard was blackmailing Luke Atme, who was in turn blackmailing Ron Delight. And upon killing his blackmailer, Luke Atme tried to frame Ron Delight. He then claimed to be guilty as Mask the Mask in order to escape his true crime. And to that end, he came up with his plan. Or with this, this plan to use the double jeopardy rule when making his alibi. Um, at any rate, it would seem we finally found the truth. Excuse me? and came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of murderer. Don't ignore me. Oh, I didn't realize you were there. Why wouldn't he be? Um, about the verdict. I know, you never committed any murder. That's right. I'm so glad you understand that, but I am... Um, I really am Mask the Mask. Huh? So thanks to that trial yesterday, I'm innocent now, right? Uh... What was it you said? Double Jeopardy? Now that you mention it, I've been careless. Careless? Um, what do you think, Mia? As a defendant says, the rule of Double Jeopardy is absolute. A defendant can never be tried twice for a crime in which he was once found innocent. Then, Master the Mosque is really innocent. Which seems so. For now. For, for now. Now then, this court finds the defendant. Not guilty! Yay! For the second time, but this time. For real, for real. Boy, this is really lucky. Wait, uh, I... This isn't so good after all. You see, the thing is, I still have mask the mask after all. You did it, Phoenix. Thanks, Mia. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because Maya doesn't call on me much these days. Oh? I'm just joking, Phoenix. Don't take everything so seriously. But on the other hand, Maya, she seems kind of torn these days. I mean about becoming the master of the Kurain Channeling School. Becoming the master and saying goodbye to our mother. Misty Faye, right? What drove her, will you, Phoenix? Of course. Well then, see you around. Mia. Oh, uh, Mr. Wright. Um, I, uh, I don't know what to say. Congratulations, Mr. Light. Thank you so much. Uh, no, wait. Nothing really matters anymore, though, now that all of this has happened. Come on, just be happy already. Maya. I mean, claimed that the murder charges and got off as Mask the Mask to boot. But 
In exchange, I lost everything. Huh? What do you mean? Stealing security information from KB Security, becoming masked the mask. I did it all for one reason. For her. You mean your wife, Desiree. She hates criminals more than anything. Come to think of it, she was once held hostage by some robbers, wasn't she? She always said how she hated sneaky criminals. I knew that. I knew that, but... Once I got fired from KB Security and lost all the money I had, she wouldn't have... She wouldn't have any reason to stay with me. I thought she would leave me for sure. So that's why you became Mask the Mask. Yes, but it's all over now. A broken bowl can never be put back together. That's not true, right, Nick? Right. Really? Can we go back to the way things were? You'll be fine, and Nick can prove it. I can? I kind of wish you would check with me first. Mr. Delight, even if the bowl is broken, there is always a way to put it back together. Where is the goddamn urn in this? Oh, it's all the way over here. Do, 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 do. A sacred urn? Dusty was the one who found this. Desiree, your wife. She's always believed in you, Ron. That's why you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about anything. There you are! M Mr. Light. You did it, Ronnie! You're so- You're- You're so- You're innocent! I'm so happy! Thank you. I- I appreciate that. But, um... I- I suppose you don't want anything more to do with me, do you? Ronnie! Why didn't you talk to me about what was going on? I had no idea you'd quit KB Security. I never imagined that you were really Mask the Mask either. Mr. Light, what are you going to do now that you know? You're not going to really leave him, are you? Come on, it's obvious, isn't it? How could I ever let a wonderful man like him get away? After all, my bike's really fast. So fast that there's no way he could ever get away. Um, but didn't you say that you hated criminals? Hm? Oh, I only hate people who act all cowardly and sneaky. Like that detective. I see. My Ronnie went and declared his crimes before he committed them like a man. I just love a man who's so chivalrous. Ch chivalrous? I knew I was right about you. Every day I spend with you is filled with thrills and excitement. Desi! Desiree, you really do love Ron, don't you? Nikki boy. Y yes? I'm really glad I asked you to, to defend my Ronnie. Thank you so much. I'll never forget what you've done for us. Oh, well, um... Take care of yourself. Take... Why did... Why did... Why did... <laughs> why did things just turn into Ron? Oh my god, I'm too tired. Take care of yourself. You too, Nikki boy. I can feel my face going red. Mr. Nick! Mystic Maya! Congratulations! <gasps> Talk about bad timing. Mr. Nick! You with another man's wife in front of Mystic Mario. No, 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 you got it all wrong. I'll never forgive you. Never, ever. So, just as the case came to a close, so too did my consciousness. Ron said a broken bowl can never be put back together. But I know that's not true. I mean, just look. Here's a perfect example of one that was put back together even better than before. Oh my god, that's so cute. That's so cute. Oh my god, they're so cute. Tiny children, love them so much. Protect them at all costs. <laughs> oh god, that one. <laughs> well. That's it. That's it. Oh my god. Yes. I managed to do it in under four hours. I really speed run through that. I mean, granted that I actually went by a guide most of the time. But yeah, wait, how long is that next one? I don't know why I'm like so like obsessed with like finding out how long things take. I just am for some reason. I know that there is like a... Oh, okay, the shorter one is after that. This one is one, two, three, four, five parts. This is the same as... Okay, so it's like... 
It has just as many chapters as like this last one did. Huh. And then there's a short one, and then there is a long boy. Which I'm which I, I'm gonna have to split into. <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna be able to do that in, in, in one sitting. Um, let's see. Recipe for It, it has the same amount of chapters, but it is definitely longer, shorter? I don't know. So yeah, that's really it. Bye guys.